just moments away from kickoff now at Portman Road. Ipswich Town versus Aston Villa is the first of this Sunday's Premier League matches. Watching for BBC Radio Suffolk, a former town captain, Mick Mills, and your commentator, Brenna Woolley. So just six games into the new season, we round off September with town's third fixture against the Champions League side. Been a far from easy start, hasn't it? There were certainly good things in the defeats to Liverpool and Manchester City, but ultimately no points. So will that change this afternoon as Kieran McKenna's men try to extend their unbeaten run to four games against a Villa side that's won its last five in all competitions? It's fairly rare to have a Sunday match in the Championship unless it's a derby. So this is another little reminder that it's which town are back amongst the big boys. It's five and a half years since these two last met, with Villa beating Paul Lambert's town 2-1 at Villa Park on that occasion. As one club was destined for relegation that season, say no more, and the other promotion to the Premier League. Now they meet for the first time in the top flight since March 2002. And Mick, we've seen Liverpool, we've seen Manchester City. How tough do you think this afternoon's going to be? Well, well, I've just written down that this is our fifth team we've met in the top eight of the division. Uh, and it's only our sixth game. So we're certainly getting to know the uh, strengths of the Premier League, that's for sure. Uh, but possibly not the weaknesses, if there are any, that is. You know, so I think you can look at both of these teams. I think Ipswich have been gifted a really difficult start in the first six matches. And I think Aston Villa um, have had a fairly easy start. They've only played Arsenal, and all the other games they've sort of played have been, in their eyes, sort of games that they possibly should win. So this will be interesting to see where both teams are really at, you know. So certainly we have had a really, really difficult start. I think we've coped really well with it. And I don't see... Every time I come into this stadium, I think we've got a chance. And that's without looking at the opposition. Because I know what it's like to play at home. I know what it's like to play in this type of atmosphere. And it does benefit you. There's no question at all about it. So today we're playing a good side, but we have a chance. Kieran McKenna already in his technical area down below us, watching on as uh, various officials, substitutes and medical staff go beyond him. The uh, Spaniard Unai Emery now just walking hands in pockets in front of Kieran as the two shake hands, warmly pat each other on the back as the two sets of players shake hands on the uh, halfway line. Crackling atmosphere inside Portman Road. The smell of smoke around the place after the uh, fires went off greeting the two sides for this two o'clock kickoff here uh, under heavy skies but at the moment oh, the sunshine actually looking like it's about to uh, break out the two teams then this afternoon town have made three changes from the side that got that dramatic late draw at southampton eight days ago burns and smodic dropped to the bench could just isn't involved at all phillips comes back after injury and then the wide attacking areas of benny one side Jack Clark down the other, it's Clark's full league debut for town. And Murich, the goalkeeper in all pink, town incidentally in blue, white, blue. Murich is back for Twanzebe, O'Shea, Greaves and Davis. Then you've got a two of Morsey and Phillips, a three of Ogbeni, Hutchinson and Clark in support of Delap. Eight summer signings in this side, including Amari Hutchinson. On the bench, Walton, Smodix, Chaplin, Burns, Johnson, Taylor, Hurst, Luongo and Townsend. No place the likes of Burgess, Wolfenden or Broadhead at the moment. Uh, one change made by Unai Emery. John McGinn is out with a hamstring injury. Leon Bailey comes in to their side. Martinez is their goalkeeper in all green. He's the captain, the Argentinian World Cup winner. His back four, Concert, Carlos, Torres and Dina. Dina, the Frenchman at left back, making his 100th appearance for the villains. The two in midfield, similar system to Ipswich Town. Tillemans and Anana. The uh, Belgians, Anana has been a terrific summer signing. He's been getting rave reviews. The big number 24 cost 50 million from Everton in the summer. 
the three in front of them, many life and legs in these players, Ramsey, Rogers, and Bailey, and it's Ollie Watkins, uh, the England striker up top, looking for his fourth goal of the season. On the bench, Gauci is their subkeeper, Nedeljkovic, Martson, Bogard, Philogene, that's Jaden Philogene, who chose Villa Park ahead of Portman Road this summer, Swinkles, Barkley, Buendia, former Norwich player, and John Duran, who has been uh, getting a lot of goals from the uh, subs bench. The Villa players in their change kit, white shirts, white socks, and washed out light blue shorts as Ipswich Town and Villa come towards the centre circle. There will be a minute in memory of David Rose, former Ipswich Town Club secretary, who passed away recently. Taking charge of the administration of Town's FA Cup and UEFA Cup winning years. Following retirement, he was made honorary vice president of the club in 2004 and received a UEFA Order of Merit in 2006. A minute's applause in tribute to David will now be held, starting and ending on the referee's whistle. Ipswich Town and Aston Villa pay tribute to former Ipswich Town club secretary David Rose who passed away recently. It will be Ipswich Town who get this Premier League game underway. Amari Hutchinson is standing over the ball in the centre of Portman Road. The referee this afternoon is Stuart Atwell. The Towns win at Blackburn back on Good Friday. VAR Darren England with assistance from Adrian Holmes. The fourth official Sam Barrett, who's actually the referee at Brighton a couple of weeks ago. Play underway in Ipswich Town's sixth Premier League game, looking for their first victory. They've drawn the last three games after those early season defeats to certain title contenders, Liverpool and Manchester City. Thrown over the far side, it's Conser, the uh, England international. Centre-half by trade, but having to fill in it right back at the moment. Interesting to see Tyrone Mings here. He was picked up by the TV cameras earlier on, still missing after that nasty knee injury early last season. Moritz gets his first touch on the ball, just draws in Watkins, plays it out to Greaves inside his penalty area. Greaves to the far side, Davis, kept in by Davis, just behind left back, cleared forward by Greaves. Good to hear from him earlier on for the first time on BBC Radio. Suffolk has had a terrific first month and a half. As an Ipswich Town player, the former Hull man, jab forward by Morgans on the stretch, Greaves gets it away ahead of this weekend. No Premier League player, Moy, more clearances than Jacob Greaves. Here is Twan Zabi, played for Villa against Ipswich Town a few years ago. Axel Twan Zabi, while on loan from Man United. Town playing it around at the back. There is Murich to Greaves. Greaves forward down the far side, away from Clark. The lap won't get there. In steps Carlos, the Brazilian. Now with uh, Tielemans scored you know, Leicester's winner in the FA Cup three years ago. Lovely ball from Tielemans, nicely taken down by Watkins outside the Ipswich area. Watkins in field to the number 41. Again on this uh, left hand side, it's with Ramsey. Ramsey in field to Watkins, challenged by Phillips. Delap can't get a hold of the ball. Phillips is battling for Anana to Watkins. Morgan Rogers tries to play a 1 2, looked at his shirt tug. That was dangerous. Nothing given by the referee. Ipswich Town have it on the near side with Ogbeni. Ogbeni to Hutchinson in front of Unai Emery. In steps Dinia, out with the ball. Well, every team are trying to play all the short passing in the world, and but it, it, you've really got to, at this level, you've got to be able to hit that ball that Aston Villa hit just now. The one over the top that Ollie Watkins just picked up, goal side of the uh, town defender. It's a very important pass to have in your locker. No, that's such a presence in midfield. Gives the ball to Conser. Conser on the right-hand side. Villa have it now with Bailey. Bla Bailey's playing wide on the right, Ramsey on the left. Back goes to Anana. Early stages of this Premier League game. Nil-nil between these two sides. 18th versus 5th as far as the table is concerned. There is the Spaniard 
Torres. It's been a good signing since he joined Aston Villa. Now to his right-hand side, Carlos, into the path of Conza, like Watkins, a former Brentford player. Infield to Inanna, once of Everton, up towards Rodgers, the playmaker in the 10, Watkins to Ramsey. This is good play from Aston Villa, wide on the left-hand side. Dina tiptoeing to the edge of the box, touches the ball back to Ramsey. Unai Emery's left hand's in the air, signalling out to his players. Tielemans pulls the strings in the centre of the park. Number eight also might fancy a dig from here. He does, he gets underneath it, it loops over the bar. Yeah, it's a nice little start. They're very much in control of the ball at the moment, Aston Villa, and, uh, you know, I just... He didn't get taken on Axel Chu and Zabi, but I'm looking at the fullbacks. This, this is a tough division for fullbacks. It almost seems every team that we play against are going to have a couple of wingers, and if they do get isolated one to one, it's a, a terrific opportunity for any team. Phillips bundled to the floor. The referee gives the decision. Ipswich Towns way. Tillemans all over the back of the unknown Manchester City player. Good that he's back and available after missing Southampton last week. Never did. Never did sound like a particularly serious injury, but uh, possibly missed him last week. Here is O'Shea, getting a little run of games. Just into the path of Greaves, Greaves to halfway. Jack Clark's first involvement goes back to Greaves. Now O'Shea, the Irishman, out to the right-hand side, looking for Ogbeni. Ogbeni, a little header down, away from Hutchinson. Torres clears it up towards uh, Ramsey. Come through the ranks at Aston Villa, Jacob Ramsey. Very highly regarded. Young player, the 23-year-old uh, made his debut at 17 during the last Premier League, uh, sorry, the last Championship campaign. This is their sixth season up, incidentally. He only stayed up by a single point in that first year, Villa, but boy, have they built since then. Back-to-back -back European campaigns for them now. They've got Bayern Munich this uh, coming week in the Champions League after seeing off Swiss side young boys comfortably a couple of weeks ago, that's sort of Harry Kane for uh, that particular match. That'd be a nice little boost for Unai Emery if he's missing. There is uh, Phillips going back to Greaves. Town and Blue passing it around inside their half of the field. Murich looking into midfield and Morsey. It's beyond him. Villa are on the ball in white shirts. Phillips, it's with the man inside the box. Far side, Bailey, the Jamaican international. Turning, Leif Davis facing the goal. Bailey to the overlapping Consa. Consa still has the ball for Villa. Going back to Carlos, square to Torres, Villa with possession inside the Ipswich half, going from right to left, backpedalling on the halfway line, it's now Torres, infield again to Carlos, clattered by Delap. referee says play on, concert infield to the very lively Bailey. This fourth season, this is coming from German football, Leon Bailey, very exciting wide player. Well, he's been on the bench of late, he's come into the team for McGinn this afternoon. And I am really the livelier of the two managers just at the moment. In midfield, it's Anana. Anana goes back to Torres. Villa push forward, can he pace in this Villa side? Torres looking forward towards Rodgers. Leif Davis heads it away into the path of Calvin Phillips. He just helps it on its way as he's challenged by Anana. Referee says free kick for the foul on Phillips, who stayed down. Well, that'll give us a chance to get on the ball. Uh, just one thing whilst all this uh, passing from Villa was happening, I'm just watching when we do get the ball, it's interesting to see how far infield Jack Clark comes, you know, off that left touch line. He obviously is being told he's he's going so close to Liam Delap that if he reached out, he could touch him. And why they're doing it is to give Leif Davis. Here he goes now. Greaves over the top for Davis in some space. Wide on the left-hand side, players arriving in the centre. Tries to pull it back to us. Hutchinson in steps. Tillemans, good covering as one of the defensive midfielders. Well won back by Ogbeni. Morsey to Hutchinson inside the Villa box. Tries to get it through to Delap. He's still bundling into the ball. Ogbeni back to Morsey. Oh, he shot belts against Hutchinson. Wow, that was travelling. And as far as Calvin Phillips, the crowd want him to shoot. Good play from town. Phillips to Jack Clark inside the box. The pullback. Delap shoots and scores! He beat Martinez at the near post, and it's trickled into the net. It's two and two at Portman Road for Liam Delap. And Ipswich Town lead Champions League Aston Villa by one goal to nil. Yeah, it's amazing. I was just talking about that Le Leif Davis situation. We've tried to do it two times already, where Jack Taylor comes right off the touchline to let Leif Davis get that space down the, down the left side. 
Nothing came of it in the first two instances. But then whilst I was talking, we saw that long ball going down the touchline to Leif Davis. And the whole thing happened from that moment. We put pressure on the Villa defence. We had a couple of opportunities to do something. Nothing came of it. And then all of a sudden, Jack Clark gets a loose ball and he picks out Liam Delap, and it's in the back of the Villa net. It's been all Aston Villa up until that moment that Leif Davis found that room down the left-hand side. Also, shot wasn't off travelling, the one that hit Hutchinson, that was going to trouble Martinez, but then Town kept going, kept plugging away. Jack Clark involved, and Liam Delap. He's on two for the season. Tillemans looking forward towards Watkins. Greaves were headed down. Watkins inside the air, holds off Greaves. Then he goes down. No penalty, says the referee. You did have an excellent view, and it has to be said, no Villa players, including Watkins, really appealed for the spot kick. As the ball's out far side for a throw in to uh, Aston Villa. Well, town led against Manchester City. They now lead against Aston Villa. Well, let's see how they can net maintain that 1 0 advantage. Carlos goes back to his goalkeeper Martinez, one of the game's characters, the former Arsenal player. has been a great signing for Aston Villa and Martinez. And amongst all of the madness uh, at times, he's a very, very good goalkeeper, one of the best. Ball forward for Villa, going long towards Watkins, headed away by Twanzebi. Greaves gets there, has to watch the bounce, nods it to his right hand side. Villa. Have it on their right, that's the far side of the field in this first half with Conza, a little drag back, tries to get away from Jack Clark. Villa play it neatly on the far side of the field. It's with Bailey, Conza has to stretch to keep that one in play, which he managed to do, back it goes. Villa, as you'd expect, the lion's share of the possession. Anana through the legs of Tielemans to Torres and halfway. He goes square to Carlos. Villa trying to build from the back, Bailey leaves the ball, cleared away by the left boot of... Jacob Greaves into the centre circle. Such an explosion of noise when that ball found its way into the net, down to Martinez's right side. Dina towards Ramsey. Twanzebi hacking at him, he goes down, free kick to Villa. Yeah, and it's the same situation it was before the goal, it's since the goal, it's, it's Villa who are doing all the probing. The biggest threat at the moment is actually Ollie Watkins over the back of our two centre-halves, so we have to be careful of that. Uh, but their passing is very good. Town are 1-0 in front, which is the all-important thing. Uh, but there is a pattern to this game that suggests Villa are going to have most of the ball. Town with only one win in the last 14 in all competitions against Aston Villa. Villa are beating an eight here, five wins and three draws. But most importantly, this afternoon, Villa find themselves behind live on PBC Radio Suffolk Sport to lap with the goal. Dina goes square with his free kick to Tielemans in midfield. Little drag back, gets away from Hutchinson, gives it back to Dina on the left hand side. Forward in front of him is Ramsey. Ramsey comes in field square to Tielemans. A man's gone down in the box in a white shirt of Villa. And then it's a high wasteful ball forward from Tielemans out behind. Oh, there's a player holding his face inside the uh, penalty area. Might well be one of the uh, centre halves who've gone up for that. Free kick, which took an eternity in arriving. I think it is um, Torres. Carlos is certainly jogging back towards the uh, halfway line. 11 minutes gone in our latest full match commentary here on BBC Radio Suffolk. Our penultimate one before the second international break of the season. Town go to West Ham this coming Saturday. In fact, because of the international break, we've waited four weeks for a home game. Now, after this one, it's another three weeks before uh, Everton. Uh, come here, a win for them yesterday over uh, Crystal Palace, also in yesterday for Arsenal, it's 4-2 against Leicester. Chelsea enjoyed the same scoreline uh, against Brighton, good win for Fulham at uh, Nottingham Forest, and in the later game, uh, Liverpool getting the better of uh, Wolves, who are in a, a right old pickle, 2-1 to uh, Arna Slot's man. Murich, right-footed, straight towards the goal scorer, Delap, backing into Carlos. Anana gets it back to his goalkeeper. The referee says play on, nothing wrong with that. And now an old green that is Emmy Martinez. Bending a ball to the far side. Esri Consa in field from Bailey to Anana. Consa now goes back to his centre half. Diego Carlos, former Seville player. And Torres, there is that Dina. 
The likes of Paris Saint-Germain and Barcelona on his CV, uh, Digne, like Inanna came from Everton. Now it's with uh, Martinez, beaten after seven minutes by Delap. Delap passing it around at the back. Lots and lots of possession of the ball for Aston Villa in this game. There is Torres in field, controlled by Tielemans. Not sure he was the actual target, but he did well to adapt. He's played it into the path of Konsa, opening his long legs far side. Konsa has Bailey in close proximity. He's given it to the winger. Bailey goes back to Inanna, 30 yards from goal. Wasted pass from Inanna. Straight at Leif Davis. Davis looking for Delap. Delap nudged to the ground. And play continues on the far side with a free kick to Aston Villa. Now it's the number 14, Torres, once again. Left hand side, Dina. Round of applause inside Portman Road for the 13 year old Taylor Irriton who died in Colchester so sadly uh, a couple of weeks ago it's a nice touch from both the town fans and those of Aston Villa Tillemans over the top might be a chance for Rogers inside the area lifted away from Murich up goes Watkins in the box good defending headed away only so far it was O'Shea who did very well with Watkins the town have got rid of that potential danger it look a real threatening situation for a moment or two Jack Clark's done well he somehow got it to Delap far side it's just those two on the charge Delap Trying to reverse ball into the path of Jack Clark, but Conser got back and passes it to Martinez. Yeah, it was quite fortunate there, Conser, because Jack Clark had really sort of got a couple of yards on him, and and I think he was sort of actually catching him with his feet, you know. And I think that Clark gone down, we would have got a free kick. Villa down this near side, their left. Good play from Ramsey, got the better of Ogbeni. Now Watkins on the left outside the Ipswich area, tries to get inside the box. Greaves does well, poor clearance from Greaves. Rogers, couple of keepy-uppy touches, back to Rogers inside the box! It's 1-1. One, one. Real quality from Morgan Rogers. There are three, four Ipswich Town players sitting down in the area. That was less than convincing defending by the Blues. And after 15 minutes, Villa have levelled it up. It's Morgan Rogers' first of the season. It's Town 1, Villa 1. Yeah, I think it's uh, Jacob Greaves that's uh, performed the cardinal sin where he's actually hit the ball. He's, he's put the ball anywhere, but he chooses to put this uh, loose ball back across his own penalty area. He's, he's on his own byline, and when he actually hit the ball on the ground, it literally never left the uh, surface, and it is picked up about 14 yards from our goals, dead centre, and it was just uh, really... They just had to work the ball to get a chance to put the ball in the back of there. A really, really poor mistake by Jacob Greaves. By all means, hit the ball in that direction, but you've got to get about 20 feet height in, in on the ball, you know, to make sure it clears the box. Good finish from Rodgers, good player uh, as well. Actually joined Middlesbrough last summer, it was only there six months before Villa picked him up in the uh, January transfer window. It was a move which raised a few eyebrows, he pretty much went straight into their Premier League team and has um, never looked back. Started his career at West Brom before he went to uh, Manchester City. I saw him have a long chat to Liam Delap earlier on, also knew uh, Townsend, the Ipswich Town substitute from their time together at the Hawthorns. He finished that very well. So we're uh, even Stevens. Uh, so there's a foul challenge there. Down goes Delap, free kick to Ipswich Town in a position of some promise. Sadly, their lead just lasted uh, eight minutes. Yeah, there's a little bit of head tennis going on there, and uh, there are about three or four headers into the air, and then the last challenge, I think it was Carlos, uh, Diego Carlos. It was a ridiculous challenge to make. He was never going to be able to get contact to the ball, and it's given us a nice free kick. This is uh, it's shootable, but I think there might be just a diagonal ball that goes over the top of the Villa defensive line, which is on the 18-yard box. Town have yet to score twice in a Premier League game this season. They're going to have to do that this afternoon if they're going to win this one. It's 1-1, one, one, free kick to town, 28 yards from goal. Davis puts it into the Villa box, trying to with a header, just still the mark. Went onto the roof of the net. Incredibly, he's never scored a league goal in his career 
Axel Twanze, but you got a good look at that one. Well, it was a good free kick to start with, and we actually we had two or three players that might have got on the end of it, and uh, it was a good header, it really was, because Martinez in the Villa goal, he really thought it might go underneath the crossbar. He made an almighty effort to try and get a touch on it. Fortunately for him, it's gone over the bar, but he thought, like a lot of people did, that it might go underneath the bar. Watkins with a good header down into midfield, great block by Greaves, needed to make it as well, otherwise Bailey was running through the centre with freedom, De Lapp picks up the ball in the centre of the park, Hutchinson gets away from the challenge of Tielemann, Tielemans to the left-hand side, Davis, Davis into the box with an early ball, Jack Clark's header's over, but as he pounds the near post, he believes he should have done better, and I tend to agree. Well, he should have done, it was a fabulous stealing of the ball in the centre circle uh, Amari Hutchinson and then he plays the ball to a free running Leif Davis and a Jack Clark which is doing an awful lot he's not staying on that touchline he doesn't want to stifle that area for Leif Davis and by coming in the centre he's on the end of the cross and should actually put it in the back of the net 1-1, one, one, good game as well, Tanner had other chances yeah, beyond game. that first goal of the game from De Lapp, sadly just cancelled out in the last few minutes from Rogers after some poor defensive play from uh, Ipswich Town's perspective. Twan Zabi infield towards Hutchinson, hoping to have a greater and greater influence in this game. He's had a good season, Hutchinson, so far. Leif Davis on that left-hand side. No one in all four divisions more assists since the summer of 2022 than... Leif Davis is having an impact in this game. Morsey trying to get the ball through, but it was uh, deflected as intended pass, possibly looking for Delap. And a grateful Martinez scoops it up on the edge of his area. What a chilly afternoon here at uh, Portman Road. 19 minutes gone, and this uh, 2 o'clock Sunday kickoff. Time to have a couple of Sunday games in November. Tottenham here, sorry, Tottenham away, Manchester United here, should I say, either side of that particular international break. Here's Bailey. Up against Davis, another good challenge for the Ipswich Town left back. Passes the ball back to Inanna. Inanna just gets it over the top of Dilap. Took a bit of a risk. And I Emery blowing a gasket down in front of us. Yeah, well, there's no no future on the pass that he's chosen to play. So don't make it a dangerous one. You know that's absolutely crazy. And and he's taken all the momentum out of the Villa attack. So it's the Villa goalkeeper with the ball again. There goes the run. Long from Martinez, O'Shea comes across Greaves to make that header. Davis infield just away from Phillips, Anana stops it to the goal scorer, Rogers, back to Anana. Rogers, I think, has been playing to the left of the three recently, but in the absence of McGinn, certainly playing more centrally and enjoying himself. Torres up towards Ramsey, Dina on the left, Villa passing it around midway inside the Ipswich Town half. Ramsey to T Torres in steps Morsey well read well intercepted brilliant run from the captain gives it to Hutchinson on the right hand side exceptional work from Morsey Hutchinson up to the edge of the box still has it flanked by two three white shirts now for Villa back it goes to Ogbeni Hutchinson once again seeing plenty of the ball at the moment Phillips to Twanzebi that's brilliant play from the captain that started that but now all ten white shirts behind the ball which is in the centre circle and under the control of Dara O'Shea, there is Greaves, who will should be mentally tough enough to have just got that mistake out of his head and carried on, there is Morsey once again, finding Twan Zabi down, linking up with a few passes inside the Aston Villa half of the field, live on BBC Radio Suffolk Sport, 1-1, to lap to Morsey, Morsey finds a gap to Greaves, out to the left-hand side, Davis, this is really nice play from town, Davis in field towards Delap. Delap controls it, drifts it out to the right, controlled by Ogbeni, real quality in this move from town, is there an end product? Twanzebi tries to find Ogbeni out, it goes for a throw and the crowd can show their appreciation. Yeah, that was really good play, excellent play, and, and before that passage of play, uh, Sam Morsey stealing the ball. Twanzebi with a throw to Hutchinson, cleared away by Tielemans. Underneath it, O'Shea is beaten by Watkins. Good play from Watkins, taken on both centre halves. Gets so far, loses the ball, then challenged by Morsey, who tells the referee that's never a foul. Sadly, Mr. Atwell disagrees with the town skipper and has blown his whistle. Yeah, just earlier, Sam Morsey, brilliant stealing of the ball, then he gives it to Amari Hutchinson, and I had to sort of notice that three Villa players immediately got across to stifle the run of Amari Hutchinson, so I thought, again, 
they've done their homework on him. So he's going to be a player that's going to get immediate attention whenever he gets on the ball. A quarter of this game gone on BBC Radio Suffolk, and Villa will know they are in a game almost at full strength. Aston Villa this afternoon. It's 1 1 as Dinia prepares to knock this long-range free kick forward off to our left-hand side towards the tan area it comes head into the box by Torres Murich comes and collects untroubled and then quickly throws it towards Hutchinson far side Tielemans is all over him down he goes free kick given for that challenge Amari did his job in that situation it's a st strange when when Amari Hutchinson made that run it Tielemans almost sort of stepped up as if he was getting him offside, and yet he was about 15 yards in his own <laughs> half. I thought, what a strange thing to do. It was, wasn't it? Greaves bends the ball down the far side, but clearly out of play before it came back in to the feet of uh, Leif Davis. The well, restart so the game far for well. Villa was uh, against Aston Villa earlier on this season, but they've won their last five in all competitions. Yes, he has, flying down that far side, uh, Leif Davis. And it's been the focal point of our attack. When you think about how much Leif Davis has had the ball compared with Ogbeni on the right-hand side, it's quite in, it's amazing. Torres runs it up to the halfway line near side, looks in field, has Digne, a simple pass just to his left. In the end, Torres goes towards Anana with his white socks pulled up over his knees. Anana back to Carlos. Villa now have it far touchline with them. Bailey, socks down low, tucked into his no doubt small shin pads, far side Leon Bailey. Here is Torres, Villa trying it on the left, then the right back to this near side, the left at the moment, Digne spots a gap, good ball and field to Tielemans, challenged by Morsey. Foul by Morsey, again he glares at the referee. <laughs> it's every week, isn't it? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Morsey and the referee, who's going to win the argument? Tillemans over this fairly central free kick, way too far out for a, a shot on goal. Though. It's got 36, maybe it's further yards from Marich's goal line. As he stands, the uh, Kostovan on the edge of a six yard box. Sunshine breaking out at Portman Road. Pretty much 25 minutes gone in this Premier League game. It's 1 1. Villa play the free kick to the left hand side. Dina's cross charged down by Jack Clark into the town area. Headed away by Ogbeni. Villa will accept a throw in next to a trio of Ipswich Town substitutes. Ramsey on the ball. England under 21 international. Rolls it back towards that uh, concert. Ramsey to Dina to Rogers, the goal scorer. The man who made it 1 1. Gets the better of Twan Zabe. he's a strong boy, Rogers as well as skillful and quick. That time he goes down, the referee says no foul. Morsey's done well in a tight, congested area. Gets the ball back from Hutchinson, finds Hutchinson once again, wants to take on Dinia, goes down. It's another free kick. It's getting a little bit bitty at the moment with free kicks this game. Up you come, Amari, come on. Yeah, you did really well, you and Sam did really well. And Chu and Zabe to actually win the ball, come out with the ball, win a free kick, but don't start rolling around on the floor. Kieran McKenna's called over Sam Morsey. He's having a long word with him down below us. Something needs addressed in the battleground of midfield. Live on BBC Radio Suffolk Sport. Every kick of every Ipswich Town game this season. Goals from Delap and Rogers and that order made this 1-1-1. So far, there is uh, Jacob Greaves giving it to Jack Clark. Had that headed opportunity earlier on. Jack Clark. O'Shea looking for the thread of pass to Delap over her elaborate. Too ambitious. In steps Carlos, gives it to Inanna. In the midfield, Tielemans turns, gives it to Rogers, little layoff to Ramsey. Ramsey tries to get into the path of Dina, doesn't make the connection he wanted to. Ogbeni is back there in an orthodox right back area. Fees it off Dina. Throw in to uh, Ipswich Town. Still a good game this week, isn't it? Yeah, very good game. It's uh, it's Villa's game for possession, but you know the action at either end of the pitch is pretty level. You know, so the the, the way Town are playing, a little bit more direct than Villa, it's working. Bailey wriggles away from Hutchinson, threads it to Watkins inside the area. It's held up well. The Villa number 11. Now it's just outside the box, far left corner. Back it goes to Bailey. Bailey has concert in support. Villa with Anana in midfield goes square to uh, 
Torres, he's seen a bit of the ball, the left side of centre half. Now Digne on this near side, back it goes once again to Torres. Second season from uh, Villarreal on the Europa League against Manchester United. Uh, Pau Torres before he came to uh, English football. I guess he's currently playing in Tyrone Mings' position in this side, left-sided centre-half. Here he is again, Torres, infield. Phillips challenges Tielemans, the ball goes on to Rogers. Rogers to Bailey on the right-hand side, outside the Ipswich area. The ball's pushed him a bit further out than he wanted to be. He's right close to that corner flag, up against Leif Davis, who's sticking to the task. Bailey eventually goes back to Conser, infield to Anana. Villa looking to go ahead for the first time in this match, 1-1, Torres. Villa going from right to left, four or five passes, back it goes to Torres. Back into the centre circle now, Villa have the ball. Concert just north of it, Bailey. Back comes Jack Clark to help Davis. Daly with the ball into the box, looking for Rogers. O'Shea's gone across there, Rogers battling for the ball. It's a real difficult customer to deal with, Rogers. Can't do anything with it as Leif Davis stepped in, though. Davis, risky pass, lovely touch on from Hutchinson through the legs of Torres. Delap has the ball, oh, Benny's gone to his right-hand side. Delap still has it. Ball over the top to the left-hand side, looking for Jack Clark. Comfortable header by Conser, back to his keeper, though. Yeah, that was good again. That's, that's exactly the pattern of the game. Villa, Villa, Villa with the ball, you know, probing, probing, probing. And then we sort of win possession and then, you know, very quickly we seem to sort of create a bit of danger in the uh, Villa defence and had we have had the ability there to see this central run of Amari Hutchinson, we would have been in business. 16 minutes to go until half-time. Benai Emery again out of his technical area, having a word. Here is uh, Tielemans. That's league game for them is a week today. Manchester United, Aston Villa. That's another tester for them off the back of uh, Bayern Munich. It's going to be interesting to see how well they uh, handle Champions League games and then getting back into the groove in terms of Premier League the week after. Ball forward towards Watkins. Watkins inside the area. This will be a threat. Ollie Watkins still has it up against Jacob Greaves. Gives it back to Bailey. Bailey needs support. Can't find Rogers. Good interception from Calvin Phillips. Well done for Ipswich Down. Jack Clark's got the ball. Holds on to it well. That's good play from him. Morrissey back to Davis. Morsey again finds his goalkeeper, Murich. Murich clears first time into no man's land out far side. No, if uh, Leif Davis is not in the advanced position, you know uh, Jack Clark is going to be in a, a, a not a central position, but a sort of uh, position way off the touchline. So that diagonal ball is not really the one to hit. He should be sort of having a little hit of, uh, of Benny with the ball, really. So he doesn't seem to be in the action at all over this side. 15 to go in this first half. McMill's alongside me, as he will be at the London Stadium on Saturday. Match day on air from 2 till 6 on Saturday. West Ham struggling at the moment. Uh, a 1-1 draw for them at Brentford uh, yesterday. Had that early goal for Brentford in that game. Uh, run of doing just that, Thomas Frank's side. Torres for Villa, infield to Anana, bang in the centre of the Ipswich Town half. It was Delap who gave Town the lead, Rogers cancelled it out. Both goals in the first 15 minutes. There is Rogers, robbed by O'Shea. Town can't make the ball stick. Villa have it once again with Rogers. There is uh, Tielemans, thought about going one way, went the other. Rogers takes on Hutchinson, beats him. It's looking a real threat. Morgan Rogers clearly uh, loving life back in the West Midlands. Bailey one on one with Davis. Bailey pulls it back. Anana outside the box to Tielemans. Tielemans gives it to the right hand side of Concert. Patient stuff from Villa. In comes across eventually to the centre. Watkins heads it down. It's 2 1 Villa. England international beats Murich at close quarters and Villa have turned a 1-0 deficit into a 2-1 lead. Well, Villa were passing the ball around, they were threatening the left side, threatening the right side and I was thinking they, they, there's no danger down their left side. I don't think uh, Ramsey has really sort of got the ability to threaten his fallback but I was thinking that on the other side, Bailey is threatening Leif Davis, but I was thinking Leif Davis is doing a good job, and then all of a sudden he gets a ball and he squeezes this cross in from absolutely nothing, but it's perfectly placed where the cross goes, and, and Watkins is a, is a lovely header. But this, this is not a winger beating a fullback. 
He's purely and simply bent the ball around the fullback and he's got it absolutely spot on for the striker to head comfortably into the back of the net. But uh, I, I was just going through my mind, Leif Davis doing a good job on his on his opponent, and then that happens. I was thinking exactly the same. I almost said it uh, as well about Davis. He seemed to be doing more than all right against Bailey. But sadly, just that moment of quality, and it was an inch perfect for a, a very, very good striker in Ollie Watkins. And he headed down across Murich, what, three, four yards out, no more than that. And uh, Villa lead 2 1 uh, in this game at Portman Road. So it sounds unbeaten little run and that's severe jeopardy against a good side. But Town have had other chances in this first half. Let's see what they can uh, muster up uh, in this next 12 and uh, beyond in the second period. Live on BBC Radio Suffolk. Portman Road, all the noise at Portman Road is coming from the uh, Villa fans who picked out their. They've absolutely packed out, should I say, their uh, area opposite us in the cobbled stand. Martinez at walking pace, has the ball in his D, finds Conser. Lovely autumnal conditions here now for um, football. Really bright afternoon all of a sudden. Martinez out to Tielemans, Tielemans from the D, gives it to uh, uh, Carlos. Well, uh, trying top of the live table uh, at the moment. If they do go on and win this game, after six games, Ipswich Town will have played the teams in first, second, third, sixth and eighth uh, in the Premier League. Such a tough start for them as Dina goes back to Torres. Now Martinez inside his area has been known to take risks, but on that occasion he curled the ball round De Lapp, finding Carlos. And the ball swung out of play, far side off a Villa man, Ipswich Town throw. Yeah, so say it's been, this has been a much closer game than you than you think really I mean Villa yes in possession have, have dominated the game really but but the the stats at either end of the pitch are absolutely identical and what's interesting is there's been no corners and corners are normally one from where you are really forcing the play and you're getting a little bit of desperate work work from defenders but there's no desperation out there from either side I don't think it's a very measured game a little bit of desperation in that challenge from Villa, far side. It was good marauding play from uh, De Lapp, who'd been fed by his captain. And Liam De Lapp's won it, so it's down a free kick in a, a good position. Town have got to make the most of these kind of uh, set pieces. Got Mark Hudson working on them uh, as a set piece coach. He's actually on his feet down below us, the uh, former Cardiff manager. Let's see what it's town have been working on in recent times, it's uh, Leif Davis on this free kick, over on the far side, the Ipswich left, plenty targets to hit in the centre, 2-1 Aston Villa lead, left-footed from Davis, looks a really good ball, Greaves heads it down, comes as far as Phillips, Phillips shoots, oh, what a hit from him, a brilliant save from Martinez, a lesser goalkeeper might have well have been beaten by that, because it was a really strong right-footed driven effort from Phillips, that was certainly going into the corner of the net. The well, first thing is that our, our first line that's attacking the cross is a good line, and it looks capable of winning that uh, challenge. Um, but also, a lot of teams sort of ignore the fringe. We had it last week at Southampton when they ignored the fringe and Morsi scored. They've ignored the fringe there today, Aston Villa, and we've nearly scored from Kevin, Kelvin Phillips. First corner kick of the game after 36 minutes. It's gone the way of Ipswich Town. It's Leif Davis from by the tunnel. In it comes, good delivery, still alive inside there. O'Shea flung himself at the ball. Phillips out to the right-hand side, asked too much of Leif Davis. It's out for a throw to Villa at left back, but Town a threat again. Yeah, I tell you what, that, that ball in there was more dangerous than, than people thought. I mean, I thought that O'Shea was going to make contact with it, you know, so from crosses, we're actually sort of, uh, we're, we're, we've got a threat and Villa are not happy with what we're doing. I think that possibly when Phillips hit that ball, he maybe thought that was destined for the net. It was good goalkeeping by Martinez as uh, Morsi is penalised again for a foul this time on um, Bailey inside the Villa half of the field. Villa lead this game 2 1 on BBC uh, Radio Suffolk Sport. The lap put Town ahead, but then Rogers and Watkins have turned this one around. Still a feral while to play, not least of all this next. Eight minutes of the first half. O'Shea back to Murich. Murich's clearance goes into the centre of the field. Clark helps it on beyond Amama. Amari Hutchinson into the path of Leif Davis. 
Just a lot of attacking in this first half. Davis through to the lap, onside, one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, saved by Martinez. Good goalkeeping, it's a corner kick, but you've got to score those chances when they're at a premium in the Premier League. What a wonderful pass from Leif Davis. This is a brilliant pass, it's a great run, but the pass is brilliant, it really, really is, and I'll tell you what, he's given uh, Liam de Lapp one hell of a chance, it really is, and that is good goalkeeping, but it was a fabulous pass, great running, and unlucky Liam de Lapp. Tell about some chances in this half. Davis with a corner kick in towards the near post, headed away. Got him not sitting comfortably on this 2-1 lead at all. Good reaction from Town. Benny gets into the box by the byline. Can he keep the ball in play? No, he can't. It's out behind for a goal kick on this occasion. Two really good stops from Martinez, from Phillips, and then from Delap. He's certainly been worked in this half. Yeah, he has. I mean, and I'll tell you what, if the uh, you know Emery doesn't sort his right side out, then he's going to be in trouble in this game without question. Uh, Jack Clark is coming in field. Leif Davis is making those runs down that left-hand side. They don't know what to do with him. They don't know whether to pass him on to Konza, whether to get uh, Leon Bailey to track back a little bit more. They do not know what to do with it. sure has gone down holding his head in an aerial challenge with Ollie Watkins, who's uh, pleading innocence. There's an accidental one from him, but uh, O'Shea has clearly felt that. Big strong lad, Watkins. Very, very good player as well. It's his goal that's made the difference. Uh, in this game, Town playing well, but they uh, are behind. O'Shea is uh, up on his feet, talking to the referee. Ooh. Watkins has uh, wandered away. The referee now takes O'Shea away from uh, the other three players, who've now walked with the pair of them. Morsey still there, so too Twan Zabi. Referee still there, talking to uh, Dara O'Shea. Six minutes to go in this uh, first half. And I'm speaking to the fourth official down below us. It's O'Shea just checking his teeth as he gets ready to take this um, free kick inside the Ipswich Town half of the field. Town beforehand brought in Phillips, Ogbeni and Clark for Burns, Kajust and Smodix. If you weren't with us at the start, good play from Hutchinson. Hutchinson looking out to the left-hand side and Davis, who's continued a threat to Villa. Bailey. Launches it up in the air, Twanzebi comes in field before Watkins can challenge, Bailey again, it's a curling ball out to the left-hand side of the outside of his left boot, Ramsey rolls it back to Dina, just kept the ball in play, next to the TV camera near side, Tielemans through a little gap in midfield, Anana then finds Torres, five to go live on BBC Radio Subic Sport in this first half at Portman Road. Torres, square at centre-half to Carlos, who works it into the path of Conser. Conser over the top to the run of Watkins, Murich quickly to the edge of his area, uses his gloves. Yeah, that's the run, you know, that we, we sort of picked out early in the game that Watkins makes. He, he does it really, really well, and, and Villa players, the, even the backline players are looking for that pass, they really are. They're, they're conscious of going short, 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 which is the normal thing to do, but out the corner of their eye, they're looking. Is he going to make a run over the back? And if he does, I'm going to try and hit him. Phillips didn't have many options in front of him. Eventually goes back to uh, Murich, standing in front of the uh, Sir Bobby Robson stand off to our left-hand side. Now here is Morsey bursting up towards the halfway line, then checking back. Nice design on the match programme today, the thriller with the Villa. Picture of... Uh, Daly and Atkinson, I saw some town fans referring to this as the uh, Daly and Derby. So exciting there is uh, contributions, the late striker to uh, both clubs. Morsey through a little gap to Jack Clark in the centre circle. Clark holds on to the ball, pokes it out to the right into the path of Twanzebi. Twanzebi's done well to find Doc Benny. Promising play this from Ipswich Town. They've got themselves into the final third. Wide on the right hand side. Hutchinson getting away from Dinia. Brilliant play from him, but then he ran out of steam. 
And in the end, Towner uh, at least got a corner kick off Torres. Wonderful play by uh, Amari Hutchinson, but again, not enough respect for him. I just, I've noticed that a few times. They didn't respect Liam Delap's pace in the early games. They don't respect Amari Hutchinson's ability. So we've got to cash in whilst we can on these two guys because these guys that have been up here a long time do not know them. Three minutes to go until half time. Can Town draw level? Having led this game 1 0, it's currently 2 1 to Villa. Town knocking on the door there. In comes this corner kick from Davis. It's a good one, headed away by Conser on the edge of his six yard box. Out as far as Hutchinson. Town can rebuild. Hutchinson shifts the ball into the centre, then crosses, spilled by Martinez, gathered at the second attempt. I'd like to think if Town had turned that one into the net, it would have counted, because it seemed to be a mistake by him rather than him being impeded by a Town player. Tangle of legs between Bailey and Phillips on halfway results in an Ipswich Town free kick, and Martinez has now gone down on his back on the edge of his penalty area. Isn't getting a great deal of sympathy from the uh, home crowd. No, I think he's taken a little bit of a blow. It's a great ball in by Amari Hutchinson, by the way, and the keeper does really, really well. He, he gathers it. You know, he's under extreme pressure, he's gathered it nicely, and then it looks as if he's going to ignore the run, you know, through the, the, the back of the town defence, you know, but he ends up, he delivers it, then Villa do commit a free kick, so that's, the referee's got that right, then I, Martinez gone down, did, no, I don't know, again, you know, is he really, does he really need the old cold sponge? Just the one like win this. in ten Premier League games against Aston Villa. That came back in March 1994. Villa unbeaten in ten league games here. Haven't lost here when league points have been up for grabs for now uh, 40 years. Martinez still down, uh, incidentally, on the edge of his area. Most of the Ipswich Town players, bar Murich and Davis, are across in a little area just down below us, taking on board some uh, refreshments. And also hearing from... Um, Kieran McKenna, Martinez is uh, up on his, feet, on his feet. It's had a few extra minutes beyond the uh, 45. We're now into the 45th minute as um, Shani Aluko goes for a little jog from the Ipswich Town. Bench down below us towards the tunnel off to our right. Oh, he's had a busier first half, uh, Emmy Martinez, and probably the majority of those Aston Villa fans would have um, expected against a newly promoted side. Made some Good saves, particularly ones from um, that one from Phillips, and then from Delap when Delap was put through. Lovely ball from uh, Leif Davis, who's had a, a good first half. The uh, left back. When play resumes, it's going to be a Jacob Greaves free kick inside the Ipswich Town half. Gives it to O'Shea. Back it goes to Greaves. Greaves over to the left hand side. Davis with a swing of the ball favours Conza. Conza's clearance pings off Davis. It's out behind for a goal kick to Martinez. The uh, fourth official's board's about to go up with the uh, number of added on minutes at the end of this uh, first half. It's just the three. Three minutes. I was just watching there, you know, when Leif Davis is threatening to go on that forward run. Um, the guy he's playing against, Leon Bailey, stays with him for about 15 yards and then decides, no, I'll pass him on to Konza. But Konza actually has come infield to actually sort of semi-deal with uh, Jack Clark and is not ready for the handover, so they're getting it woefully wrong. Rogers to Ramsey, Ramsey in field to Watkins, Watkins has the ball 30 yards from goal, good hold-up payment, and Morsey nicks it off and excellent from the captain. So a pretty good first half, Morsey, yes again, but uh, this wayward pass goes over the far touchline before Delap can get there. Villa in no great hurry to get the ball back in play. Concert was eventually going to take this uh, throw. It started at Charlton actually for just the one season out at Brentford. As a uh, concert, played for Brentford a couple of times uh, against Ipswich Town. Brentford, one of Ipswich Town's next uh, opponents coming up. Greaves intercepts the attempted flick on from Rogers. Greaves then goes back to O'Shea into midfield and Phillips. Phillips challenged from behind by Bailey. Free kick here off the back of this. Town have got West Ham away. Everton at home, Brentford away, and Leicester at home. Without counting our chickens, and not for one second suggesting that any game in the Premier League is easy, it does look a run of games that during which time they've got to find that 
first win of the season. Ogbeni, little nod down to Hutchinson, operating on the right-hand side. Good work from Hutchinson, infield to Morsey. Morsey holds on to it, changes direction, comes in field, just behind Jack Clark on the stretch. Can Clark get a hold of it? No, he can't. Rogers is there, challenged by Phillips. Good challenge, says the referee. Rogers unhappy. Davis plays the ball in field. Rogers now in a run chance from behind by Moores. It's going to be a yellow card for Moores. He not that oh, one challenge. No, it's been no, for a few. No, that's wrong. Uh, no, I agree with that one because there's been a few little ones. That's he's, wrong. Had, he's had a warning. And he's been enjoying enough. his game, Sam Moores. He hasn't been <laughs> malicious or anything like that. He's, you know, he's been having a bit of fun out there. And then first, first free kick, really. It's you know, and he's sort of, you know, do they? Do they book him before the game? I don't know, when they do their homework. <laughs> yeah, not a popular decision from Mr Atwell, but definitely it's been a few little niggly fouls throughout that first half, which has resulted in a yellow. Not that one foul by any means, but uh, it's just got to watch them step back. That's four for the season for Sam Morsey inside six games. Not totally unexpected. Torres up towards Ramsey. O'Shea and Twanzebe go for the same ball, but thankfully one of them gone. Clever back heel from Ogbenic, comes off Dina, that worked well. Town have just probably got another minute or so to play of this first half to try and draw level. Except at the moment, as the scoreboard says, halfway up the north stand, it's Ipswich Town 1, Aston Villa 2, and that is it for the uh, first half. The uh, Bouge you might have heard from a minority, would have been towards the referee, certainly wasn't going to be towards either side, and Morsey's now having a word with the referee, which is really silly. Thankfully, he's walked away from that situation. And now Morsey's telling Delap not to uh, fight any battles on his behalf. And off they go. It's been a good game of football so far, McMills. Yeah, I've enjoyed it very much. I mean, with the, this is, uh, I think this is almost as well as we've played this season so far. We're, we're sort of getting close to the really good, tidy football that we played in the two promotion years that we had, you know. Um, Aston Villa have had the bulk of the possession, there's no question about that, but when we've sort of seized possession of the ball, we've been pretty precise, we really have, and, and we've been really good down that left-hand side, and as I said, I'll repeat it again, if they don't do something about it at half-time, they will be in trouble, because I think, I think the, 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 the guilty two, obviously, it's, it's, it's Bailey, the, the wide attacker, and it's Consa, the right full-back, and I think You've got Bailey, who doesn't particularly want to track back too far. He's obviously a forward who doesn't like that part. He's thinking, I'll pass him on to Konza. But Konza being more of a centre-back than a right-back, he's going infield too much and worrying about Jack Clark too much. I'll tell you who's, who he should be worrying about. It's Leif Davis coming into that big open space because that's what Leif Davis likes most of all in a game of football. So... They've got to sort that out, um, but they are a good side, Villa. Their passing is good, they're very, very tidy. They've got this guy up front, Ollie Watkins, who's a real threat. He's a threat all the time, whether it's going after a ball over the top or whether it's what he did when he put the ball in the back of the net, a precise header into the back of the town net. But looking at town, we're doing OK. We're, we're, our four, I think Chu and Zabi will not be beaten, uh, by but Ramsey all day long because Ramsey hasn't got the pace and cleverness to beat him. Leif Davis unfortunately got, has got done with the cross, but he has dealt with uh, Bailey really well. So fullbacks doing well. I think the two centre halves are on a knife edge. I really do, like they were, you know, a different two against Liverpool. But the same thing where Yotta, the Liverpool striker, really kept making those runs and it looked all the time whether it was going to be successful Watkins is a real threat and they've got to keep on top of the game you know but but uh, Morsi's playing well he, he slowly came into the game but uh, a lot of things he's doing now is really really good you know we've we've had sort of good match Delap continues to to have this threat right the way through the middle of the pitch he should have he scored one he should have had another uh, Martinez, I've got to give him a mention. The two saves he's made from one from Phillips, one one from Delap, have been absolutely excellent. You know, so we have just marginally had more shots than what uh, Villa have had. We've had all, the only corners of the game as well, so we're not out of this. You know, but it is a good game. It really is, and and. Uh, 
Villa look every every bit of a top eight team. They really do, you know. So uh, we're having a hard start. We really are, you know. But we're learning all the time, and we look pretty good today. Town have had chances in that first half. Any that come along in the second half, they've got to make the most of because they're right in this game. They're playing very well. But sadly, after the first 45 this Sunday afternoon, it's Aston Villa who lead this one by two goals to one. And your thoughts on that first half? Most welcome, 81333. If you'd like to text in 08000 321333 on WhatsApp, start your messages with SFK. Mick Mills will be taking your calls at full time as usual on 0800 141 2121. We'll be back with Mick and Brent at four at the second half in a few minutes' time. It was just our women also in action this afternoon. It was a two o'clock kickoff for them away at Exeter in the National League Cup. They drew 2-2 with Exeter in the league a couple of uh, weeks back. It is 1-1 at half-time. The track girls ahead uh, thanks to an early goal from Ella Rutherford, but the home side hit back just before half-time, so 1-1 in that one. I'll give you a quick cricket update and then we'll look back at yesterday's non-league action of note in just a moment. Wayne Baby in our breakfast. breakfast. Whose stomach's rumbling? Oh no. Was that you, Harvey? That was. I haven't had any breakfast. None at all? No. I've got a spare banana. Tomorrow sees the end of a line, end of an era for a West Suffolk shop. Sneezems has been in the county for 150 years. Now we've been on the very high street since 1890 and we've always been here. It's all we've all the town has ever known. We're part of that community and the town will miss us and we're gonna miss them. TV remote control is apparently said to be dirtier than your loo. What? Really? As are laptops, toothbrushes and makeup brushes. Wayne Babin at breakfast. Weekdays from 6. BBC Radio Suffolk. You with match day, uh, just a couple of minutes before three o'clock. It's just town one, Aston Villa two, half time in our main feature. Full second half commentary on the way shortly. The final one day international between England's cricketers and Australia is underway in Bristol. Remember, England trailed 2 0 in the series, got it back to 2 2. It's the decider today. Uh, one stage earlier, with England batting first, they were 215 for three, all out in the end for 309 from 49.2 overs. A century for Ben Duckett. He hit 107 from just 91 balls. Harry Brook, the skipper, made 72 from 52. Uh, nice cameo from Adil Rashid towards the end of the innings as well. 36 from 35. So uh, the Aussies chasing 310 uh, to win that one and uh, their chase will get underway very shortly. Uh, look back now at yesterday's non-league action of note locally and Leyston and Lowestoft Town both still in the FA Cup after forcing replays in the penultimate round of qualifying. Nil-nil for the Trawler boys away at Haringey Borough, while Karen Clements levelled at the death for the Blues in their 1-1 draw at home to Hornchurch. Leyston may have left it late, but manager Chris Wigger believes they earned their replay. Yeah, I think that we know on our day, you know, at Leyston we're, we're, we're capable of, of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone. We've proved that over the last sort of three or four years, and, and I think, you know, we've been in, we've been in, in good good form with regards to the way that we've been playing. So today wasn't any fear for us, but um, I knew the lads needed to, to turn up and, and, and you know, they, they did that. I was I was really proud of the performance. Kyron Clements came on as a substitute, normally a centre-half, but he can play up front and he uh, proved why with a very good headed goal to get you the equaliser. Yeah, I mean, look, Kyron has been has been has been playing really well for us um, in, in a centre-back position. Um, you know, and, and, and it's one of those ones where sometimes you have to think about because we, we played at Bedford and I didn't I didn't keep the players available to be on the end on the pitch at the end of the game on Tuesday night and I, and I had a real think about that prior to the game today so so it was kind of an idea of mine that if we were winning Kyron comes in fresh legs goes into a back five if we're losing Kyron goes up front and and he's got that goal in him you know we can get crosses into the box and the way that we structure ourselves you know allows us to get balls into the box so so you know it was something that we considered and I spoke to North Darren and Jarve about before the game so so you know Kyron going into that position and and he was he did exactly what 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 was planned really obviously draw today means a replay down in Upminster on Tuesday night which as a result the Suffolk Premier Cup tie at Berry Towns going to be postponed for a second time what are your thoughts going into the replay Tuesday? Probably a game you could have done without, but you're still in the cup and uh, no doubt we'll go down there looking to try and progress. 
Yeah, and I think like, if you're if you're involved in cup competitions at this stage of the season, you know we're now about to add the trophy into the mix as well. Um, so we've got three cup competitions to play, and the games are going to come thick and fast. Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. We, we, we're fine with that. You know, we have a group of players for that. We'll, we'll adjust our priorities, but but for me, you know, no change. We were going to play Tuesday. We're playing we're playing the replay Tuesday, um, and we'll enjoy a trip down there. You know, we have no fear on the road. We'll, we'll enjoy a trip down down to Hornchurch on Tuesday and see how we go. Laysan manager Chris Wigger with Nick Garnham. So Laysan at Hornchurch for an FA Cup replay on Tuesday while Lowestoft replay at home to Haringey. In the Southern Premier League yesterday, AFC Sudbury lost 3-1 at Bedford in the Central Division. Felixstone, Walton United, Milton Hall Town and Newmarket Town all suffered defeats in the Isthmian North Division while Ipswich Wanderers drew 2-2 with Redbridge. Uh, Wanderers' second goal, the uh, final goal of the game, coming in the fifth minute of added time so a point rescued but manager Glenn Driver disappointed on the day we're down on our knees with the squad at the moment you know there's no excuses um, we're playing right backs who are centre midfielders forwards who are midfielders we've not played with a centre forward all season and we just pick you know we just can't really get no rhythm going you could clearly see that today we I thought we started the game quite bright we had a, one or two chances but as did they um, and yeah, and at the depth, we concede again in the 88th minute. We leave a player free on the edge of our box. He scores, and then, you know, Rash does great to get a late equaliser. But yeah, I just feel that's two points dropped rather than one gained. First half, um, nothing to choose between the two sides, but you did miss a lot of really good chances. Well, when you go through one on one and you don't work the keeper, that's when you know you've got problems in that area. And, you know, we're not have Tom Richardson, we haven't had Kai Fletcher all season. Um, you know, we played Rashid up there as a as a lone striker and tried to get bodies around him. And, you know, he's gone round the keeper and put one wide. Dylan's gone through one, one, one on one and don't even hit the target. Um, I think we've had another hit the post from a deflection. But then obviously, you know, they've had one cleared off the line um, and they've had a, a good chance with a header go wide. So not a lot to choose between the t- two sides first half. Um, but when you miss big, big chances like that, it's the times you miss them. And when you do take those chances, you can then get a bit of momentum in the game. They've got to come out, leave a bit more space in behind. But it wasn't the case. You know, we didn't take chances and we concede straight after half time. You've seen it all before, I know. You'll, you'll come through it and um, enjoy the next game, hopefully. Oh, 100%. You know, you, you, can't, you can't get too high when you lose and you can't get too high when you win. Um, it does hurt, you know, when you come off from that and people are telling me, oh, well done, you were good today. I'm an honest guy. We weren't good today. We've we done all right in little patches and spells. But I wish football people would see that we are going through a transitional period and not just see results. Because, like I said, to take this club where they want to take it and with the ambition of the football club, you know, we've got to get a group of players together that we know every time they step out on the across the white line, we know what we're going to get. At the moment, with all the kids we've got, we're not too sure, you know, what we're going to get from one game to the next. But, yeah, it rolled sleeves up. I've been here too many times to know, you know, I built a side at Leicester I built a side at Braintree and um, I'm not going to stop until I build a side here. Well, if I'm given it a time to. <laughs> <laughs> really out of your hands in some ways, yeah, Glenn. Is, but, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know that as well as everybody. Of course. But you've got Woolbridge here on Tuesday. Yep. Yeah, looking forward to it. It gives us an opportunity to most probably play a few of the boys who have sort of like um, been rested and one or two of the kids. It's a cup we want to do well in. We won't. T- we'll show Woodbridge nothing but respect. Um, you know the way we're going at the moment. You don't know what you're going to get. So we'll come here Tuesday and hopefully a bit more local support from um, around the county and um, get a few more people in the building supporting it switch wonders because it is, it is a really really nice club. I've been at a, f- a few clubs now and there's. You know, the kitchen staff, down to the people who sell the ticket. It's a real, real nice club. And the vibe around the place is really positive every time you walk in. So if you ain't doing nothing Tuesday night, come down and give a, give us a look. It's just Wanderers boss Glenn Driver with Stephen Fossey yesterday. They mentioned that Suffolk Premier Cup tie with Woodbridge at Humber Ducey Lane this coming Tuesday. It's one of a few second round ties uh, taking place next week. Also on Tuesday at Needham Market, uh, the holders aiming for a fifth Premier Cup triumph in as many seasons uh, face a uh, Long Melford, it's Hadley v Lakenheath, Brantham v Kirkley and Pakefield on Wednesday. Felix Don Walton at home to Mildenhall and Cornard United facing Ipswich Town 11. What a first fixture back in the competition that is for Cornard. A second half of Town v Aston Villa coming up.
Ogbeni back to Morsey. Oh, his shot belts against Hutchinson. Wow, that was travelling. And as far as Calvin Phillips, the crowd went on to shoot. Good play from Town Phillips to Jack Clark inside the box. The pullback to Lamp shoots and scores! He bit Martinez at the near post and it's trickled into the net. It's two and two at Portman Road for Liam De Lapp. And Ipswich Town lead Champions League Aston Villa by one goal to nil. Poor clearance from Greaves. Rogers, couple of keep you up, he touches. Back to Rogers inside the box. It's 1 1. Real quality from Morgan Rogers. There are three, four Ipswich Town players sitting down in the area. That was less than convincing defending by the Blues. And after 15 minutes, Villa have levelled it up. It's Morgan Rogers' first of the season. It's Town 1, Villa 1. Davis puts it into the Villa box. Transaby with a header, just filled him up. Went onto the roof of the net. Incredibly, he's never scored a league goal in his career. Axel Twanzee, but you've got a good look at that one. Hutchinson gets away from the challenge of Tielemann. Tielemann's to the left-hand side. Davis, Davis into the box with an early ball. Jack Clark's header's over. But as he pounds the near post, he believes he should have done better, and I tend to agree. Tielemans gives it to the right-hand side. Concert, patient stuff from Villa. In comes across eventually to the centre. Watkins heads it down. It's 2-1 Villa. England international beats Murich at close quarters, and Villa have turned a 1-0 deficit into a 2-1 lead. Greaves heads it down, comes as far as Phillips, Phillips shoots! Oh, what a hit from him, a brilliant save from Martinez. The lesser goalkeeper might have well have been beaten by that, because it was a really strong right-footed driven effort from Phillips that was certainly going into the corner of the net. Davis through to the lap, onside, one-on-one! -on -one. Oh, saved by Martinez! Good goalkeeping, it's a corner kick, but you've got to score those chances when they're at a premium in the Premier League. On BBC iPlayer. Where's James? Your brother spent day in and day out at some grisly murder scene or other. Until three nights ago, when he didn't come home at all. When his twin goes missing. James didn't just vanish, he left breadcrumbs, coded messages. Can a puzzle setter solve the biggest conundrum of his life? I'm impersonating a police officer. Yes, but he's your brother. That's really not the legal loophole you think it is. Starring David Mitchell and Anna Maxwell Martin. Ludwig. Bit awkward, really. I think I might just have solved a murder. Watch on BBC iPlayer. We're on air till uh, five with Match Day on BBC Radio Suffolk. Uh, your thoughts, hopefully at full time, on an Ipswich Town point or uh, even more, but they're going to have to come from behind to do it. Let's rejoin Mick Mills and Brenna Woolley ahead of the second half. Town just out ahead, ahead of uh, Aston Villa, who are now coming out of the tunnel off to our right. Town in blue shirts, white shorts, blue socks. Aston Villa in their changed white shirts with their light blue shorts and white socks. And it doesn't look like Kieran McKenna's made any changes at half-time, nor did we expect him to. So it's Murich in pink off to our right. Is back for Twanzebi, O'Shea, Greaves and Davis. Morsey, the captain, on a yellow card alongside Phillips in midfield. And it's from right to left, Ogbeni. Hutchinson, Clark, Delap, the goal scorer through the middle. On the bench, Walton, Smoddix, Chaplin, Burns, Johnson, Taylor, Hurst, Luongo, and Townsend. Aston Villa have Martinez in all green in front of the north stand off to our left. His back for Consa, Carlos, Torres, and Dina. Then Tielemans and Anana. Bailey plays down the right. Ramsey plays down the left. Rogers, a fairly free roll in behind Watkins. Rogers and Watkins, Villa's two goal scorers. On the bench, Gauchi, Nedeljkovic, Matson, Bogard, Philogene, Swinkles, Barkley, Buendia, and uh, Duran. It's going to be Morgan Rogers kicking off this uh, second half at a very well populated Portman Road this Sunday afternoon. So, can Ipswich Town draw level? Can they score twice in a Premier League game for the first time this season? That's the immediate challenge facing them as Villa stroke the ball back to the defensive area. Torres gets the better of Hutchinson far side and slips the ball into midfield to Ramsey. Villa, of course, will no doubt feel that a third goal will just about kill off this game. Villa on the left-hand side with Ramsey, early doors in the second half. Ramsey with a pullback, Rogers inside the box, held up. Ball goes away from him, interception by Phillips initially, but it's Twanzebi who brings it away. Then Ogbeni gets pulled down. Uh, it looked like it should have been a free kick to uh, Ipswich Town. The referee wants a word with uh, Luca Digne and gives him a yellow card. Aston Villa's first 
of the afternoon. Well, that was an amazing move, though, from, from their kickoff, their own kickoff. It was an incredible. Uh, they must have had at least a dozen passes and almost created a chance from it. Phillips to Morsey. Morsey gets away from Watkins. I was really impressed by Ollie Watkins in that first half. Murich dinks the ball up in the air towards Davis near side. Real outlet for Ipswich Town that first half. Davis, a massive threat to Aston Villa. Headed in field by Dina. Anana heads it on down the halfway line. Bailey tidies up to concert. He gives it to Martinez. Martinez fires a quick pass to Torres. He saw more of the ball than Carlos in the first half. Twanzebi cushions the ball down on halfway for Morsey. The pick of the two in midfield so far in this game. Greaves to the left and Davis. Davis forward to Jack Clark. Flag goes up against Jack Clark. Pretty much all eyes were on the flag far side when he made that run and received the ball. Sadly, just missed time from the former Sunderland man. Well, his run wasn't missed time, but he actually, if the ball had gone early, he had timed his run well, but, you know, there was a slight delay in the delivery, and as soon as that delay came, then he was, he was, he was going a couple of yards offside, so they waited for that, but they could have been caught with the first ball. Well, I go long through Carlos towards Watkins, well won by O'Shea, his header handily is straight at Leif Davis, who starts to go through the gears, then plays a ball in field, Torres cuts it out, Tielemans first time, lays it off back to Dina, he'll find Ramsey, who's an immediate threat to Ipswich Town inside that first 50 seconds of the half, Ramsey, Tielemans telegraphs that pass straight under the forehead of Greaves, Phillips finds Twanzebi. Twanzebi up to Ogbenny, who maybe gives a shove in the back of Dina. The referee said play on, but possibly that's because the ball was with Torres. Yeah, I think he would have given a free kick. Yeah, I think he was going to, wasn't he? Carlos out towards Consa. Consa through the legs of Delap. That was fortunate for Villa. Back towards uh, Martinez. To the left hand side, Pau Torres in the left back berth. Villa with just about 90% of possession at the start of the second half. A oh, lovely play from Ramsey, left Twanzebi in his wake. Twanzebi's galloping to get up with them, but then Ramsey's final ball to Watkins was very lax. O'Shea to Murich, Murich gives it back to O'Shea. O'Shea then passes it out to Morsey. Nice play from Ipswich Town in the defensive third. Twanzebi again to Morsey. Morsey turns, close control on the outside of his boot. One of his trademark skills. Now he's got himself a bit of space, the Egyptian. Gets to the halfway line and plays it to Leif Davis live on BBC Radio Suffolk. And right in this game, lots of good stuff in that first half from Ipswich, albeit they let a 1 0 lead slip. O'Shea to Davis. Davis with a clever header to Jack Clark inside the box, onside this time. Still Jack Clark, the number 47, shoots deflected, comes back to him. Not quite. Villa might have just done enough to get it away. They clear through concert. That was half a sight of goal there for Ipswich Town. That was brilliant play, and it was the two left siders that uh, did the link up. Wonderful play by them. Great ball from Phillips. He's done very well to release Delap down the left hand side. Delap's touch ticks it out behind. Good defending from Carlos. Goal kick to Aston Villa. I think that Jack Clark had got himself an angle for the shot, and, uh, and he then needed to take it when he decided to decline that opportunity and then work another position it, it, you know there were too many sort of bodies around him then but uh, it's again it's a nice move by town Sam Morsey heavily involved in the play Leif Davis heavily involved and of course Jack Clark this is a, a, a useful threesome today well I finished fourth last season the best top flight finish in 28 years that was they were in the Europa Conference League last season we were for champions league this uh, time around speaking to a, a colleague from bbc wm earlier on saying he's looking forward to going to like of bruges and monaco in the champions league i think they've still got celtic and juventus to come at villa park this new look champions league uh, group stage or the league stage should i say morsey brought to ground by rogers free kick just short of halfway taken quickly by greaves there is that uh, calvin phillips has tended to get better as games have progressed, Rogers late challenge on Phillips. Well, he's just downed our two defensive midfield players in about five seconds. Yeah, very lucky not to at least get a word there, Morgan Rogers. I think he will do. Yeah, the next one, certainly, if you'd like to think so anyway, will deserve it. Rogers loses the ball to Clark. Phillips feeds to Lapp. 
and stretches one of those long legs of Anana, gives it to Tielemans. Rogers in field to Anana, who turns, gives it back to Torres. Six minutes gone on the second half, no further goals since the break. Still Villa lead 2 1. Nice control from Watkins, holds off Morsey. Watkins gives it to Bailey, back to Watkins, brought down by Morsey, gets it out to Rogers. Watkins looking at the referee. Can't believe that he didn't get a decision. Jack Clark dribbling the ball forward, gives it to Hutchinson. Nice play from Clark. Hutchinson on his bike, crossing halfway. Has Ogbeni for support to the right. So too Twanzebi digs it out to the right hand side, looking for Ogbeni. Overhead clearance from Dinya. The referee being booed for uh, some decisions which the home crowd believe Ipswich Town didn't get but should have done. Greaves. Bang in the centre of Portman Road. Rolls it short to Calvin Phillips. Phillips to O'Shea, the seventh minute of this second period. Morsey brought down from behind by Rogers. Surely the referee's going to have a word with him. No. Sam's quite right to ask the question. How on earth is he getting away with foul after foul? Phillips. Well, therefore, we were wrong about the next one uh, being warranting a word from the referee in terms of Rogers clattering into an Ipswich Town player. Clark. Paul layoff. Davis wins it back though for Ipswich Town, then gives it to Phillips. Phillips in field to no one other than Tielemans. Tielemans gets to halfway, held up by Leif Davis in a central midfield area. He's vacated left back. Bailey wanted to make the most of that. The ball hasn't come his way. Eventually does, but then beats himself, trying to be too slippery and tricky, and ended up on the deck without the ball. But I know what he was thinking there, he, he had, his, ma his marker, Leif Davis, was caught in the centre of the pitch and he was now being marked by Jack Clark and he must have realised this is an opportunity for me to actually run at a forward. Yeah, he was desperate, that Christmas had come early for Bailey, but the ball didn't arrive. Long from O'Shea out to the left-hand side, Davis, lovely touch on to Jack Clark inside the area, left of centre, low first-time ball across comes off the concert and town win the first corner of the second half what a partnership this has been today uh, leaf davis jack clark they seem to sort of have a terrific understanding they've obviously been coached well as to who's going to play in what areas but they seem to know exactly where each other are they're, uh, they're having a marvelous game as a individually and as a pair they know each other from their time together at leeds and it has showed talking of leeds it's now former midfielder Calvin Phillips on this corner kick. Phillips with his first corner kick of the game for Ipswich Town. It's 2-1 Villa. It's deep to the far post, but straight into the palms of Martinez, who drops it out to Tielemans. Villa on the break, bursting through the middle. Twanzebi brings down Tielemans. It's going to be a yellow card for Axel Twanzebi. Good goalkeeping again. This this fellow has impressed me, uh, Mar Martinez. He really is good. He's he's been a, proven he's a good shot stopper. He's taken good crosses, and the intelligence there of getting the play on the go quickly. He looked at the two that were further up the pitch. Decided no, can't use them. But he saw the two that were just uh, pretty much vacating the, uh, the the penalty area, and he just rolled a little ball out to them, and they were able to get on a break. Still a good game, this, in sunshine at Portman Road. Concert, there's a short free kick in midfield. Now in the centre circle, Concert gives it to Tielemans. On the right now with uh, Leon Bailey. Left-footed cross from him into the Ipswich Town area. Deep, Rogers heads it back as far as Torres, but the flag's up near side for an offside against Aston Villa. Yeah, a little bit of a wasted free kick. They didn't uh, went and decided to go short, but didn't seem to look to see what future was gained by going short because there really wasn't anything. Davis towards Phillips. Phillips toe pokes it over the top of Jack Clark. Actually, the ball somehow stayed in play, but destined to be a throw in. Ten minutes gone exactly in the second half. Afterwards, your thoughts very welcome on BBC Radio Suffolk. We're on air till five o'clock on match day. Call 0800 141 2121 or you can text 81333 stop those messages SFK or you can WhatsApp 08000 321 333 stop those messages also with SFK. Long ball forward for Watkins. Murray uses his head, heads it to halfway. Morsey controls it. There is uh, Calvin Phillips to the right-hand side. Very rare occasion when Ipswich Town men and women are both playing at exactly the same time. Uh, the women away to uh, Exeter City. They've already been in the league. That's a, a cup game 
the day for Joe Sheehan's side. Any news of how they get on later on. Phillips up towards Delap. Delap behind Ogbeni on the far side. It was directly in between Twan Xavier and Ogbeni, in all honesty. That's it out for a throw in. Well, that was good goalkeeping from Murich, by the way. That, that was an excellent through ball. Terrific run from Watkins. But the goalkeeper was really good at, at taking the high position and dealing with it. Four minutes to go until the hour mark. You can also email me as well with your thoughts on this and all things Ipswich Town ahead of tomorrow's Blue Hour on BBC Radio Suffolk. Regular fixture on a Monday night between 6 and 7. The email for that is brenner at bbc.co.uk. B-R-E-N-N-E-R at bbc.co.uk. Morsey with a late challenge there. Nothing doing on this occasion. The Villa fans are all over that one, believing he should have got a second yellow. The Villa player Tillemans is down. My heart was in my mouth for a split second, fearing the worst in terms of uh, Morsey. <laughs> he does catch him, but I was surprised that the referee stopped the game because they had a nice advantage. They got the ball sort of out and around to the right-hand side. They had good numbers down their right-hand side, our left-hand side, and then they stopped play, which I think benefited us more than Villa. Tillemans has stayed down, he's going to be OK, though. Just uh, wasting a bit of uh, extra time. 12 gone in the second half of this uh, Premier League fixture. Villa up to second in the uh, live table. Liverpool currently top of the pile after their win at Molyneux last night. See Ross Barkley out on this near side from the uh, Villa bench. Looked like a good signing in the summer. Davis, illegally challenged by Bailey. He's seen a great deal of football in the last couple of minutes. Morsey. Rodgers was all over him. Didn't make contact <laughs> on that occasion. Yeah, I think he wanted a little tap of the ankle there. Yeah. Here is um, O'Shea. And these two centre-halves for Ipswich Town. Roll it square to his mate at Jacob Greaves. Phillips points to go back to O'Shea. O'Shea out to the right, looking for um, Ogbeni. Out for a throw to Ipswich Town. I would imagine we'll see Wes Burns at some stage in place of uh, Chiwok Benny. Twan Zabi with a throw back to O'Shea on halfway. 90 seconds shy of the hour mark. No goals in this game since Watkins made it 2-1 Aston Villa. Jacob Greaves to Jack Clark. Clark goes back to Greaves. In the centre circle, it's O'Shea. Twanzebi through a little gap, spots Morsey. Good play this from Ipswich Town. Now motoring on the right hand side, Zogbeni skipping away from his man. Bright play from him. Infield to Clark, edge of the area. Jack Clark thinks it into the box to Twanzebi. First time header in field. Appeals fan ball against Dina, not given. Not appealed for by players, it has to be said. It was more fans off to our left. Phillips feeds Davis, skipping away from Bailey. Still Davis, edge of the area. Inside Zanana. Morsey hits it. Off target. Appealing for uh, a faint deflection, but it's not been given goal kick. Good competent play, though. You know, we've sort of we're gaining a little bit more possession, I think, in this half. And um, no, there's nothing there, Bremer. I think that was just a harmless sort of header into the sort of the mid drift, really, of the Aston Villa player. But uh, we're looking very confident. We look as if we certainly carry a threat. Uh, Villa do as well. But uh, you know, this next goal, if there is to be a next goal, could be sort of so important to either side, really. Villa will certainly know that Ipswich Town will go till the end. And Ipswich Town will be very much in this game. Whatever's happening at the death, like they were eight days ago at St Mary's, that valuable equaliser. Twanzebi finds Hutchinson, still lively far side, still trying to cause problems, but Ramsey got in his way. Now it's with uh, Tielemans. Tielemans spots a pass to Rogers. Rogers skips away from a couple of players. Really good play that from Morgan Rogers. The reverse ball was on to Ramsey. He saw that, couldn't thread it through to him. Rogers has got the ball back again, taking on all comers in midfield. Good strong play from him. Really impressive. Konsa to Bailey on the uh, right hand side. Bailey goes back to Konsa again in the 61st minutes of this Premier League match. Town at West Ham on Saturday. Ramsey spins, held up by Twanzebi. Twanzebi like Morsey on a card. 
Torres to the centre spot for Aston Villa and Carlos. There is Concert down the line to Bailey. Left the ball behind. Jack Clark picks it up, says thank you very much for Ipswich Town. Clark holds on to the ball and floats it forward. De Lapp had stopped because he would have been offside. Yeah, it's that delay. You know, we had two good runs there, one from De Lapp and one from Amari Hutchinson. Both were on side. The ball needs to go then. They do it really well. You know, when Watkins makes his run, the ball is delivered. Dina down the left for Villa. Infield to Ramsey. Town have got back and regrouped behind the ball. Eight blue shirts behind it. Now all ten. Playing it around in front of them is Tielemans. Manchester United, Tottenham is the 4.30 kickoff in the Premier League. Tomorrow night, South Coast Derby, Bournemouth at home to winless Southampton. Bailey, 2-1 Villa leading this game as they warm up for Bayern Munich in the week in the uh, Champions League. It's their first time in the Champions League European Cup since 1982, Aston Villa. Tielemans trying to thread it through, well, he did manage to thread it through, but only to Aro Muric. Yeah, I think Rogers started to go, it looked as if he was going to make a forward run and then changed his mind, and then at the same moment, the, the player on the ball looks down to deliver and, and it goes to nothing. John Duran about to come on, he's been scoring goals for fun from the bench. In recent times, it's going to be a double change actually for um, Aston Villa. And I Emery has uh, blinked first. No sign of any immediate changes from the Ipswich Town bench. As they somehow try to get the fourth goal of this game. Otherwise, they'll be heading into the uh, final game ahead of the latest international break. Still without a win. It's a Philogene who's uh, coming on. So close to joining Ipswich Town in the summer, along with this man Greaves, who did the pair of them at Hull last year, but he opted to go back to Aston Villa. So, uh, two certainly attack minded players coming on. Maybe Bailey might be the player to uh, make way, and Watkins is the one most likely to come off the Duran, one would have thought. Phillips out to the right, firing a pass, looking for Ogbeni. Ogbeni will get on the ball. Good pass from Phillips. What can Ogbeni do with it? Can he win a thrown off of uh, his marker, Dean? And the answer is yes by the far left corner flag as we look at things. Showed a lot of patience there. We were in possession of the ball for a long time. We were sort of threatening to make the run over the top. It didn't happen, but, you know, the patience on the ball was really good. It's Rogers who is uh, coming off to be replaced by Philogene. And uh, Duran is coming on for uh, Bailey, so uh, Watkins and Duran on the field for um, Aston Villa. The remainder of this game. A real challenge for Ipswich Town's back line. 2-1 Villa still lead this one. Duran and a Jaden, as he's simply known, in terms of the name across his back, and it's a Philogene who's being booed by the Ipswich Town supporters. For, uh, not joining them in the summer. It's a throw in for Ipswich Town. Twan Zabi with the ball over in the far left corner. Gets it back to Morsey. Philogene's trying to take the ball off of him. It goes back to Phillips. Phillips in turn turns it back to Murich. Momentarily, the only player in the half off to our right. Murich hits a high ball to the left hand side where Dara O'Shea's. Almost playing as a, a left winger in open play. The second gets it back to Davis. Now Jack Clark comes in field for town. 20 minutes gone in the second half. Hutchinson to Phillips. Back to Hutchinson down the uh, left hand side. Phillips trying to get Jack Clark in behind. Headed away by Villa as far as Hutchinson. Duran gets a touch. Then played by Anana onto the chest of Ramsey. Dina is the left back of Aston Villa forward to Ramsey, infield to Watkins, Ramsey forward to Digne, will do well to keep the ball in play, has managed to get there, this is nice play down the Villa, left-hand side, Ramsey to Anana. now Tan have got bodies behind the ball, 65 and a half minutes played, the wind picks up at Portman Road, Villa at the moment extending their unbeaten league record here, Pelagin goes down lightly in a challenge by uh, Leif Davis. Free kick to Aston Villa. 
Yeah, I think if Leaf could have played that again, that bit of action, he would have just let Filagini just drop to the ground because that's what he was going to do. He had actually given the ball away. He, he sort of uh, lost the ball and then Leaf sort of came and just touched him. And that was enough for the referee to give a free kick. Here come the changes from the home bench. Taylor is coming on. Burns is coming on. I thought Jack Taylor did well at Southampton when he came off the bench last week. Free kick to Aston Villa on the right-hand side. 66 minutes played in this Premier League encounter. Tielemans pulls it back to Dinia. Dinia gives it back to Tielemans on the right-hand side. Something from the training ground. This, but then a wasted, floated cross in, which sails over the top of Murich's goal. Yeah, I think they do the the short pass uh, purely and simply because I think that I think Ipswich play a much higher line from those free kicks than anybody else I've seen, and and then then when it's about to be played, they drop off. So I think they do it to try and catch them out. The lap battling with Carlos. Carlos does enough. Concert goes back to his goalkeeper uh, Martinez. Funny members of the coaching team talking to both Taylor and Burns at the moment Kieran McKenna's in a long conversation with them um, Jack Taylor or just a, a one-way monologue probably more likely although Taylor's pointing at something as well out there Kieran's clearly identified some way in which the former Peterborough man can have a, a positive impact on matters in the centre of the field Martinez goes straight down Portman Road from left to right Philogene's on a run back comes Davis Davis gets there first he's taken a touch under pressure from Philogene turned infield then out and then left footed launches to halfway well defended under a lot of pressure Delap with a nice touch back to Morsey Phillips is on the ball there is Greaves gives the ball to Morsey it'll be interesting to see whether Taylor comes on for Morsey or Phillips in the centre Particularly if Kieran McKenna's got any fears over his captain getting another yellow card. There is Hutchinson trying to take on Tielemans, gets the ball back to Twanzebe. As Burns and Taylor wait near side. Primed and ready for action. Phillips on the halfway line, gives it to Jack Clark. He gets away from Anana. Ball into the box to Leif Davis, who shoots into the side netting from an angle. Yeah, well played, Jack Clark again, another loose ball, another almost sort of pretty much just left the centre, he's picking up an awful lot of stuff there, and he ends up giving a, a chance to Leif Davis, it's just a half a chance, I mean, it's, the, it's too far out, too big an angle to do very much with it. Phillips and Benny, the two players who are uh, coming off with a quarter of this game to go. First change from the uh, home bench as Town try to get the fourth goal of this game to level things up. Aston Villa here this afternoon. Watching on as Unai Emery sits down quietly on his seat for once. Winner of four Europa Leagues in the past. Won five major trophies in two years at Paris Saint-Germain. Been a manager 20 years now, Unai Emery. More than a 1,000 games. Very, very experienced manager at that I suppose I look back that he had as many as 78 games in charge of um, Arsenal before heading back to Spain in November 2019 and then of course picked up by Aston Villa and wow what an impact he's had at Villa Park Villa with Ramsey lose the ball far side but then get it back Ramsey gives it away straight to Jack Clark and town make the most of this gifted opportunity no, Morsey goes in on Philogene, Philogene goes down holding his ankle, not getting any sympathy from the home crowd, now the referee has stopped play for the injury to Philogene, and fans are furious. Villa fans again will be calling for a yellow card for Sam Morsey. The referee had no intention whatsoever, initially I didn't think of even stopping play, but he, he has in the end. He has deliberately tried to get Sam Morsey in trouble. He did, didn't he? Deliberately. Look at that. Surprise, surprise, Philogene's up on his feet. And if I tell you, if he had a chance to run through on goal, he'd have no worries about getting up to top speed either. The fans get, uh, getting on the uh, referee's back. And Philogene's not dead himself to them one little bit with that moment. It is a Villa free kick, knocked forward. O'Shea rises, headed away by Twanzebe. Duran desperate to just get one chance, the Colombian. That's all he's needed in 
recent times. Five goals this season for Aston Villa. John Duran yet to start uh, a league game. Four of those have come in his last five appearances in all competitions. Villa at the moment set for a sixth straight win in all competitions. Duran gets a touch, back and goes to Comsa. 26 minutes gone in the second half. We'll hear from Kieran McKenna before our fair at five o'clock. Hopefully get a hold of an Ipswich Town player as well uh, in the tunnel area. To the left-back area, Torres. Long ball downfield. Fulogin goes after it. Surprise, surprise, he's running freely. Greaves gets the ball back to Murich. Murich batters it to the centre spot. and Anna ticks it on his chest. Back he goes via Carlos to Consa. Anana and Consa play a 1-2. Consa has the ball down the right-hand side, threading the ball towards the box. Well intercepted by Greaves, good defending. Jack Taylor just on as a sub, passes it forward to Hutchinson. Nice ball from Taylor. Hutchinson straight into the path of Delap. Might fancy going it on his own. Delap inside the area. Still Liam Delap. Great run! 2-2! Goal from Liam Delap. He's now the scorer of three Premier League goals. What scenes inside Portman Road? Ipswich Town finally scored twice in a Premier League game. Can they go on and get at least a draw? 18 minutes to go. It's Town 2, Villa 2. Well, it all starts from a really bad ball from Konza. I don't think he's a right fullback at all. So. He don't, makes the mistake with his pass, he sees the bond, Amari Hutchinson in possession, plays it to Liam Delap, who is definitely onside. A little trick, plays the ball on his left foot and bang, is in the back of the net. I tell you, good signing, he's been a good signing already, this fella. He's going to be a threat right the way through. Three Premier League goals already in under six appearances. Paying back his transfer fee from Manchester City. From the word goes, looked exciting. He took that goal really well as well. Wow, let's see what develops in the final 17 minutes of this game. Who I am, incidentally, I looked towards him when the celebrations were going on. Or even just before this start, he was furious that that goal had gone in. He really did go nuts. Oh, Villa now with Ramsey. Ramsey inside the Ipswich Town area. Jacob Ramsey blazes it wide. That would have been unforgivable if Town had conceded there. Oh, that was a good move from Villa, it really was. We just got to calm down, settle down. You know, that was exciting to get the goal, exciting to celebrate it, but then you got to go, you got to go cold. You've got to really go cold and get back together. And don't, the excitement's gone. It's back doing your job, you know, and that was a big mistake by Town to allow Villa the opportunity to get back in front so quickly. Settle down, boys, and you'll find that you might get a chance to actually win this game. To fill this game, had another goal in it. I'd have been surprised if there'd just been the three. Obviously, wasn't convinced which net it was going to end up in, but thankfully, it was in the one-off to our left-hand side. 29,943. So, will it be the fourth consecutive draw? for Ipswich Town. Will they go on and win this one? Or will Aston Villa hit back again? So much still to play for. So many unknown, certainly possible outcomes, all of which are quite feasible. Davis has been clattered into, it's gone down holding the base of his back in a challenge with Philogene. Philogene certainly made an impact in this game since he came on. Jacob Greaves having a word with, a friendly word with his old mate from Hull. Well, Davis is certainly hurt, now can I clasping his uh, chest rather than the base of his back. Jack Clark having a word with Stuart Atwell, the uh, referee. What an atmosphere inside Portman Road. They certainly sense this could be the day that it happens, that their team gets their first Premier League win of the season. Certainly wouldn't rule it out. Greaves in field to O'Shea. O'Shea back to Taylor, near side. He had a hand in that move, kind of started off with a nicely weighted pass to this man, Hutchinson. Hutchinson, infield towards Taylor. On the centre spot is O'Shea. Mate, Taylor's immediately getting on the ball and doing things in the centre. Burns, his first involvement is to find Twanzebe up to Hutchinson. Hutchinson holds off the challenge of Torres. Good play from Amari Hutchinson on the far side. 
back to the halfway line. A couple of 4-2s in the Premier League yesterday. We'll take a 3-2 home result here now. Still time. 14-plus added on time to go. Both sides have led, both sides have been pegged back. Taylor driving in midfield, gives it to Jack Clark. Infield it goes from him to Dara O'Shea. Well, that certainly rattled. Here is Sam Morsey. Taylor wants the ball again, gets it in the centre circle. Out to the left-hand side, hits a pass for Davis. Davis forcing Philogene to come back and do some defending. Leif Davis has the ball in front of the north stand. Davis still has it. Back to Jack Clark, takes on, gets the better of Anana. Great play from Clark, he still has it. Back it goes to Davis, in comes his cross, left-footed. Maybe a chance, it was Twanzebe flinging himself in towards the edge of the six-yard area. It's had a play for a corner kick. Well, actually, if there hadn't have been a slight challenge on Twanzebe there, I think that might have been 3-2. That was a great bit of work from Clark. He's had a good game. I wouldn't rule out it becoming 3-2 to Ipswich Town. Fans certainly believe, so too will those players. Back by this raucous home crowd. The referee is coming across as Jack Clark gets ready to take this corner kick. I'm happy with the placement of the ball. Having a word with Jack Clark. He's then moved the ball again. It's oh. two. <laughs> it's 2-2 two -two live on BBC Radio Suffolk. Town with their tails up, though. They believe they can go on and win this Premier League game. Jack Clark with a corner kick, 78 minutes gone. In it comes from him. Flying header away from Anana. Drops down to Morsey, too far out to shoot, but at least the Blues are in possession. He gives it to Hutchinson. Hutchinson comes in field. Amari Hutchinson pulls the trigger, gets underneath it. And it sails over the bar. Well, why did nobody come to try and block a shot from Amari Hutchinson? Do they think that he can't shoot or something? That was ridiculous. He comes cutting in from the right-hand side. Nobody came towards him, and he... The villain pretty much gave him a free hit. Yeah, thoughts welcome afterwards. 0800 141 2121 is the phone number on air till 5 o'clock for this uh, Sunday Match day, text 8133, start those messages, SFK. WhatsApp 08000 321 start those with SFK. We'll get in touch with me ahead of tomorrow night's Blue Hour between 6 and 7. That's Brenner, double N-E-R, at bbc.co.uk. Your thoughts, always very welcome. Morsey, driving, gives it to Taylor. Done very well since he came on. Taylor with a little ball into the box towards Delap. Nice take from the two-goal hero, tried to spin, but overly ambitious from him out behind for a goal kick to Aston Villa I tell you what we have I, I don't say it really but we've got control of this game at the moment yep playing very well uh, double change Matson, who is a, a left back former Chelsea player right for 35 million in the summer actually played for Dortmund in the Champions League final while on loan last season he's about to come on so too Ross Barkley who on his day is a terrific talent. Remember him scoring twice on loan for Sheffield Wednesday here several years ago. Villa coming forward, little ball into the box, cleared away from Watkins. Out on the far side for a throw. So, yeah, it's uh, Buendia, the former Norwich man, is coming on as well. He missed the whole of last season through injury. Captain Villa in their win at Wickham in the week. So, uh, you know, Emery has seen enough throw into the Ipswich area, headed away by O'Shea, nodded out to the left-hand side, just about kept in by Digne, his drive hits Burns, Villa still haven't quite won their first corner kick, Hutchinson clears, not very far to Consa, he can't shoot, he's given it to his left-hand side, and Torres, Torres with the ball into the box, headed away by Greaves, well defended, nodded on by Clark, Delap gets a hold of it, Delap spins in field, he's still got it, good hold-up play, Taylor, lovely ball forward to Jack Clark, Jack Clark for Ipswich Town, ball into the box from Burns, Burns has to score! Blocked by Torres, brilliant from him, but what an opportunity for Ipswich Town to lead again in this game. Yeah, terrific picking up of the play, great break, wonderful run from uh, Jack Clark, wonderful run and a lovely little ball. Maybe he could have played it slightly in front of Wes Burns, but he's caused Wes Burns to have a touch, but I've seen Wes Burns put those opportunities away. It was a dissimilar 
from the area that he scored the first goal against Huddersfield back in May. Town at the moment pressing, trying to get this potentially winning fifth goal of the afternoon. Final ten minutes, corner kick for Ipswich, and it comes from Leif Davis, headed away by Duran, springing up on the near post. As far as Hutchinson, Hutchinson goes back to Morsey, still the three fella subs wait. Town the better side at the moment, had some chances to score more goals in this game. Got to be more clinical when they come along. It's been a good performance, a really good performance. And Anna's head is controlled by Morsey. Taylor goes back to Murich. How well has he done since he came on, Jack Taylor? This isn't every word that Kieran McKenna gave him before and had acted upon those instructions. Greaves finds Taylor. Taylor checks where Watkins is. He's behind him, but Taylor gets the halfway line, rolls it back to Greaves. Greaves gives it to Morsey. Final eight and a half minutes plus added on time poor touch from the lap it comes to uh, Telemans Telemans threw a gap to Duran to the left hand side Ramsey ball slightly behind him it's now Twan Zabi to get goal side overlapping is Dina Ramsey still has the ball for Aston Villa goes back to Telemans now Torres live on BBC Radio Suffolk Sport Anana to Dina once again, Telemans, fellow with the ball inside Ipswich territory, trying to get Duran into the box, goes down edge of the area, oh, the referee's blown his whistle, free kick for the foul by Taylor on Duran, couldn't have been much closer to being a penalty, but it's a free kick, millimetres outside the area. Yeah, it's an interesting one here. Um, Town have been enjoying the play as well, so this is a, a bad time to get a free kick in such a dangerous area, it really is. Villa will be delighted with it, Town will be really disappointed. Ding is drying the ball, whether it's for him to hit himself. Watkins is there as well, he fancies it. Duran's up on his feet. So it's just obviously 18 and a bit yards from goal. Here come the changes. Dina is coming off for uh, Matson, one would imagine. Also coming off is uh, Tielemans to be replaced by Barkley. And uh, Buendia is the uh, third and final change for. Uh, Aston Villa. And that's Watkins is coming off to be replaced by Buendia. I'm not surprised at that because I think that's been Villa's real problem is that Duran has gone on and he was wanted to play so close to uh, Watkins that it's almost like two strikers and they've gone to a 4-4-2 which has emptied the midfield a little bit and that's caused Town to get very much on top of the game. Now they've decided one striker, extra midfield player, and I'm not surprised at all. Yeah, it did seem strange that he went with Watkins and Duran at the same time. A bit more balance maybe to this. Villa side, Buendia, who's just been booed, having come on as a former Norwich player, has this free kick for Aston Villa just over 18 yards from goal Murich on his line off to our right what an impact this could be for Emi Buendia if he puts Aston Villa 3-2 up with six minutes to go at Portman Road after Ipswich Town have got themselves back into this game it's going to be Buendia the number 10 who hits this for his first touch of this match this would be quite some impact Stuart Atmel on the referee a lot to sort out there. There's a line of Ipswich Town players behind a line of Aston Villa men, just kind of blocking their view of things. So the defensive wall of blue shirts can't quite see what is going on. Eventually, the referee seems happy. It's Buendia for Aston Villa with his first touch of the ball. Five minutes to go at Portman Road. Can he make it 3 2? Staring at the ball. Now he comes forward. Four or five yards. Gets it up and over. I thought he was just going to belt it. It seemed too close to the goal line to get it up and down in time. And so it proved to be the case. Awful free kick. It was, wasn't it? Delight. The crowd was so delighted as soon as it left his foot because there was only one place that was going to go and it was going to be higher over the bar. Greaves up to Taylor, final five minutes plus added on time. Can Ipswich Town break the Premier League duck for this season? You wouldn't say it was undeserved if they do. They've done really well. 
Taylor out to the left-hand side. Davis has gone after this one. He'll do well to keep it in. He's managed to do that. Leif Davis by the corner flag. Did about all he could, played it off Filigy. And Tan have a seventh corner kick. Villa have yet to have one in this match. Yeah, that's the right thing to do. The ball to Davis was a good one. It put Davis in a good position to win the corner. He wasn't really going to sort of get the ball into the penalty area, but his intention was to win a corner, and he's achieved that. Jack Clark with Ipswich Town's latest corner kick. 86 minutes played at Portman Road. Can Town grab a winner? And it comes from Clark just over the top of O'Shea back the moving ball is now with Clark he picks out Davis Davis square in field to Morsey Morsey to Hutchinson out comes Barkley oh Hutchinson's made a mistake poor touch Villa can break the ball from Barkley's just behind Duran correct covering from Leif Davis Leif Davis has done very well Villa win it back in goes O'Shea he just launches it forward but for a second that was really worrying when Barkley tried to get away through the center goal kick in the end to Martinez yeah, it was a bit of excitement there, and it'll be interesting to see now what sort of shape Villa are sort of going to take, because this is the first bit of free play that we've been able to sort of watch since the changes, and wouldn't be too too surprised to gone back to the 4-2-3-1 that they started the game with, and they actually sort of dominated quite a lot of it possession-wise as well. Martin in field, oh, the ball reached Buendia when really it shouldn't have done. Buendia to Ramsey, wide left outside the Ipswich area, pulls it back to Martson. Infield it goes to Ross Barkley, here after a season at Luton, the former Everton and Chelsea player. There is Martson, the Dutch international. Back to Torres, 2-2 live on BBC Radio Suffolk Sport. Look forward to chatting to you on tomorrow's Blue Hour for the reaction to this match here tonight. We'll also look ahead to uh, next Saturday's game at West Ham with uh, one of their supporters. Also a really good My Town top ten uh, as well on the way tomorrow. Night. Regular feature. Burns nicks the ball, gives it to Hutchinson. Forward fly the blue shirts. Hutchinson tries to squeeze it to Clark. Then I get on the ball with Matson. Both sides desperate to get the fifth goal of this game. There is Barkley on halfway. Plays it via Ramsey back to Torres, about 90 seconds away from being told how much added on time there's going to be in this game. It's been a really good game of football. It switched town to Aston Villa to Philogen near side, taking on Clark. Maybe Town wouldn't have signed Jack Clark if he'd come here, Philogen. Probably not. Taylor, important with a toe in. Hutchinson back to Morsey. Morsey gets it out to Jack Clark. Jack Clark slips as he tried to play the ball over the top to Burns. He was unlucky. Burns was on his bike. That was a good run as well. Matson for Villa, held up by Hutchinson. A minute away from being told about the added on time. The fourth official's ready to go. George Hurst about to come on. Barkley shoots at goal, saved by Murich. Had to pat it down. The ball moved in the air. It was a good hit from Barkley. It was on target. Yeah, Hurst about to come on for Liam Delap. And also uh, Sam Smoddix coming on for Ipswich Town. We heard him talking last week about what a first home goal would mean for Ipswich Town. Scored here plenty of times in the past, uh, Smoddix for various clubs. What a moment it would be if he does come on and score here this afternoon. Villa finding passes. Barkley scooping it forward, headed down by O'Shea to Jack Clark, bends it away. Only as far as Martinez. Again, some anger and frustration being shown in the body language of Unai Emery. 30 seconds of the 90 minutes to go. Villa coming through the middle. Buendia trying to get Duran in on goal. Duran, oh, great. Basically, the toenail of Jacob Greaves just was enough to take it away from Duran, who was in on goal. Delap battling, but Carlos comes away. He's caught Delap in the face accidentally. Delap's gone down holding his nose. Play continues with Barkley. Barkley waits on the ball, Kieran McKenna's furious, wants play halted, eventually the referee gets a word in his earpiece because of the head injury or potential head injury to Liam Delap, he's stopped playing town, can actually make a triple change because Luongo is coming on with Hurst and Smolix. Delap goes off, that's his last bit of play, two goals for him, terrific uh, performance. Going to sit and get the uh, man of the match award, Liam Delap. He'll be replaced by George Hurst. Uh, Morsey is coming off to be replaced by uh, Luongo. Looks sensible as well. 
five minutes of injury time added on, incidentally, which will start when these uh, changes have been made. Smodic's on for Clark. Clark has had a good first league start for Ipswich Town. So Smodic, Hurst, and Luongo. And for Morsey, Clark, and Delap. Luongo and Taylor working as a pair in midfield. So, but no Connor Chaplin or Ben Johnson this afternoon. Yeah. Five added minutes, which uh, effectively are starting right now. Is there a winning goal out there? Philogene, infield to Anana, gets it back. Anana's caught late by Taylor, the referee says, play on. Anana getting no sympathy. Torres on the halfway line for Villa. Flicked on by Matson towards Ramsey. Touched out by O'Shea. Matson wanted to take a throw in in front of the Villa supporters. Buendia, he has the poor through the kick, Tam win it through Luongo, well done to Hutchinson, Hutchinson still lively, puts it in behind for Hurst, wide on the right hand side, he's got support in the middle, I think that's Jack Taylor who's made a run through the centre, and it's Smodix who's got himself in there, Taylor making up ground, Hurst still has the ball, trying to win maybe a corner kick, it's out of play, it's won a corner kick, excellent stuff from George Hurst. Yeah, great uh, determination there. I thought he might have just strayed offside, but the, the linesman was very, very close to him. He didn't sort of offer a flag at all. Stayed strong, kept possession of the ball in the corner flag there, and he's won town a, a very, very important corner kick. Are we about to see more late drama involving Ipswich Town? 92 and a half minutes have been played. If they score a winning goal now, wouldn't be able to say they don't deserve it. Played short this corner kick, Hutchinson tiptoes into the area, still Hutchinson has it by the byline, gets it through the legs of his marker, Davis gives it back to Taylor, Taylor hits! Straight at Martinez, off to his left-hand side, it was on target. Martinez with a quick kick, looking for Duran, good block by Luongo, it's end-to-end -end stuff, Davis in midfield, out to the left-hand side to Schmodix, controls it down the left channel, inside the Villa box, Schmodix pulls it back to Hutchinson, Hutchinson holds on to the ball, still has it, teasing defenders, out to Schmodix, back it goes to Taylor, this has been terrific from Ipswich Town this afternoon against Champions League opposition, it really has, Twan Zabi, live on BBC Radio Suffolk, Burns, Town looking for the winning goal, Burns taking on Matson. Burns still has it, plays it off Matson. out for another corner kick to Ipswich Town. Great finish, this is a really good finish against the team who looked two minutes ago as if they wanted to win the game, so now we've sort of pinned them back and we've got ourselves a couple of corners and we've got a chance, we really have. In the 94th minute, live on BBC Radio Suffolk Sports. Ipswich Town knocking on the door, desperate for their first Premier League win of the season. Aston Villa are back en masse, defending, or trying to defend, this Leif Davis corner kick. And it comes from Davis towards O'Shea, heads it down, air shot from Duran. Martinez, has he prevented another corner kick? No, he hasn't. It's a tenth corner kick of the afternoon for Ipswich Town. Well, we had late drama just over a week ago at Southampton. Are we about to see another thrilling finish involving Kieran McKenna's Ipswich Town for the moment? The manager isn't even watching. Those on the bench behind him certainly are. It's another corner kick for Town in the 95th minute of this Premier League fixture. The referee keeping an eye on what's going on in the centre. Tanner have got both centre-halves up there. Twan Zabi's height's in there as well. This to win it right at the death from Leif Davis. A high-looping corner kick up Goves Greaves. Headed away as far as Luongo. Won't quite sit down bravely. Heads it back in. There might be a chance for Smodix. The goalkeeper goes towards it. Doesn't get much on it. But the flag is up. Martinez has stayed down. Free kick to Aston Villa. That's a much-needed breather for them as well. Player of the match, I wonder who that will be, there's a surprise. Liam Delap with his two goals. Man of the match here at Portman Road. We're 30 seconds beyond 
He added on five minutes. The referee checks his watch. He waves play on. Duran is going to challenge Greaves. Good defending from Greaves. Headed on by Taylor. Brought down by Anana. Anana gives it to the right hand side and Conser. Play continues. Philogene wide right outside the Ipswich town area. Taking on Leif Davis. Getting to the byline. Philogene still has the ball. Well defended by Davis. Smodix is there. Smodix holds on to it. Again, the referee checks his watch. Smodix hits it forward. Hurst sees an opportunity. Hurst got the ball down the left hand side. Up against Carlos. Burns is in the middle. Hurst still has it. Goes shoulder to shoulder with Carlos. Good strength from Hurst to a point, but then Barkley brings it away. Barkley closed down by Hutchinson. Out goes the ball through into Villa. And that is that. It's a fourth consecutive draw for Ipswich Town, and that's the least they deserve. They look the more likely side to go on and win this game. They're led, they were behind, and they've got back into this match. Thanks to two goals from uh, Liam Delap, taking his tally to the season for three in the Premier League inside Ipswich Town's first six games. He's getting a big hug from Calvin Phillips down below us at the moment. This one against Aston Villa has finished 2-2. That was a really good game, Mick Mills. That was a superb match. It's the best that we've played this season without question. Um, so that that in itself is good because that's the progression you want. Uh, we're now on a nice little run of uh, no defeats. We might have deserved the win, but we haven't been beaten. And I think we've played against, you know, possibly a top five team. I really do. I, I'm impressed with Villa. Uh, very, very good in possession. Uh, got some very, very good players. Um, but we gave them a really, really good run for their money. Uh, we really did. You know, we took the lead, Liam Delap. Then they hit back against us. They've gone 2-1 in front. We've pulled it back to 2-2. It's been a topsy-turvy game. I think, the, they, for me, they made a couple of sort of tactical errors, if you like. I, I don't think they ever got to grips with our left-hand side. I think Konza is out of position, didn't really know what he was doing. And as far as defending is concerned, Leon Bailey doesn't know what to do. So we murdered, murdered them down our left-hand side. And also then when they made the change, bringing Duran on, that was another crucial sort of spell for me, was, was they ended up playing 4-4-2. And they emptied the midfield, we took over the midfield, and we looked extremely dangerous in that moment. They changed it back, um, and then they saw the game out. But uh, some terrific performances from town players. Leif Davis, top class. You know, he really was. He was good defending. He was excellent in attack. Um, uh, sort of Jack, Jack Clark, for me, also partnered him brilliantly by going infield, giving him the space, but not taking himself out of the game. He was always ending up linking with uh, Leif Davis. He did on one occasion when Leif Davis had gone down that left-hand side that Jack Clark had vacated. The cross comes in and Jack Clark should have scored with his head. You know, that's how well he was playing. And, and Liam Delap's performance, Sam Morsey's performance, uh, we just had four, five excellent performances backed up by you know, five or six good performances. So this was this was a, a good, good performance. It really was. We can take everything out of this game. We really can. You know, it's uh, we played against a good side. We've matched them. We've made it an entertaining game. We've we've had to come from behind once. Um, excellent. You know, and, and the individual performances. And also, I love. I love pairings on a football field, and the pairing of Leif Davis and, and Jack Clark for me, that has promise, it really has. Uh, uh, we, we know Leif Davis is a decent player, we knew Jack Clark was a decent player, but he was at another club, we brought him here, that looks, that looks good, it really does. And um, the, the boy up front, Liam Delap, wonderful. Really, he has taken to Ipswich Town Football Club, the Premiership. He settled in marvellously well. What a start he's had. He's got himself three goals now, you know, and that's not bad in six games. Is the win coming? It must be. I think we're all I kind of feeling that, aren't we? Uh, Brenner, just, I, for me, just be patient. Thing, everything takes care of itself, you know. You don't have to go and look for it all the time. You don't have to worry people about it. You know, just let it come. 
the performance level is going up and up and up. That's all you should be interested in, because if you keep performing well, you'll win more games than you lose. There's no question about it. They do run hand in hand the majority of the time. I know you get the odd occasion when you can play rubbish and win. I know all that. I've been in the game long enough to know that, but I've also been in the game long enough to know that if you perform well, week in, week out, You'll get what you deserve. Yes, yeah, boss on. Absolutely. Thanks for your company. Mick Mick hanging around to take your calls at 0800 141 2121. I'll go downstairs and uh, grab some reaction from Kieran McKenna. Hopefully, for here from an Ipswich Town player as well before off air at uh, five o'clock talking about Ipswich Town's fourth consecutive draw, and that was the least they deserved this afternoon. They've uh, shared four goals with Aston Villa. It's Ipswich Town 2, Aston Villa 2.